tell you, who would have thought Donald Trump would be the man to deliver the republic from the brink of death? He could not have picked somebody better for Attorney General than Senator Sessions. He is going to burn the globalists to the ground. DrudgeReport.com says it all. The globalists are meeting, panicking, trying to save their program. In Obama's own words, globalism is in crisis. The New York Times responds saying globalism does not exist, and I am insane. So that talk about quadrupling down. I mean, these people literally are trying to engage in mind control, and it isn't working. The fake news narrative is imploding as well. That's coming up after the break. But first, Paul Watson on the arrogance of the dying true fake news. Having lost the election and lost the argument, the bot hurt left and the rigged media is desperate to salvage some scrap of credibility. So they've decided to create a new panic over so-called fake news, pressuring Google and Facebook to take action against fake news websites. Oh, and when they say fake news, that includes any reporting or opinion that contradicts their leftist narrative. The blacklist that all the mainstream media websites are circulating as the official designation of what constitutes fake news includes Infowars and Breitbart. Well, imagine my shock. But this list of fake news websites, it had to be created by a reasoned, level-headed, impartial source. There can't be any bias involved in this, right? Wrong. It was created by a radical leftist, safe space, social justice warrior assistant professor who describes herself as a feminist activist and who supports extreme left-wing groups like Black Lives Matter and Occupy Wall Street. Well, imagine my shock. So the media is circulating a list of fake news websites created by an incredibly biased left-wing social justice warrior, which just by coincidence is full of conservative news websites and then demanding Google and Facebook censor that content. This is all happening while Twitter also mass purges so-called alt-right accounts for daring to express unauthorized opinions. They're also promoting a Chrome browser extension that automatically flags so-called fake news websites based on this same SJW created blacklist. And imagine my shock. Infowars.com is on that list. Listen, we all know that there are actual fake news websites. They're pretty easy to spot. And some of them even admit that they're fake news websites. But there's a difference between fake news stories like this and having a conservative opinion. And anyway, who gave the mainstream media the right to be judge, jury and executioner of what constitutes fake news? All you do is put out fake news. You're the aficionados of fake news. You put out the fake news that Hillary Clinton was 98% likely to win the presidency. You printed out and shipped copies of Newsweek celebrating Madame President. You said the Cubs had a smaller chance of winning than Donald Trump. You put out fake rigged polls that were proven spectacularly wrong. You put out fake rape stories that ruin people's lives over and over again. You fake interviews with your own cameramen claiming they're anti-Trump protesters. You create fake narratives like Trump being responsible for violence at his own rallies when it was DNC-funded agitators all along. By this measure, nearly every mainstream media outlet should be put on a fake news list. Oh yeah, and when some fake news website puts out a fake news story, the worst case scenario is that someone makes some ill-gotten advertising dollars. When the mainstream media peddles fake news, like the fake news story that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, hundreds of thousands of people die. You're the f experts at fake news, so how dare you accuse us of being fake news? And why the hell should anyone trust you? As WikiLeaks exposed, you're not the fourth estate, you're a public relations front for the Democratic Party. You lost the argument, you trashed your own credibility, and now you're trying to resurrect it by claiming that everyone who beat you is fake news. Give me a break. No one trusts you. That's why you have to resort to dirty tricks and censorship. And it's not going to work. Because you suck, you lie, and everyone knows now that you're fake news. That extremely powerful report is on Infowars.com. I'm going to tweet it right now at Real Alex Jones. Let's share it. To say that the news isn't incredibly positive across the board is an understatement. I tend to celebrate things after the fact. I tend to also grieve after the fact. 
I won't cry at, say, a grandparent's funeral, but I'll start bawling a week or a month later, or maybe a year later. But I tell you, when it comes to celebrating, I am in ecstasy right now. I am higher than a kite. And the only drug I've taken today is a half cup of coffee. I am higher than a kite right now. I am feeling so good. Because I've had time to really analyze what's happening and really track what Trump's really up to from the outside and the inside. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. That said, I don't see how they won't kill him. They're so damn arrogant. They don't care if it makes him a martyr. These people are very ham-fisted at this point because their best laid plans have gone astray. Ford is announcing that it's not going to move its plants out of the U.S. Not just one plant. It's now being announced that there's a whole initiative to just keep them here, period. Apple is now announcing they're going to move one of their main plants out of China to the United States. They said they're looking at it. It's basically a done deal. All because they know Trump is going to burn them if they don't. And China can go to hell. They can have, you know, 20 plus Foxconn labs for Apple can... Can we have one? Can we, can we maybe you get 20 something, we get one? This isn't a trade war. The globalists have had their foot on our neck. And by the way, all these top analysts are now admitting, okay, the dollar's up. Okay, all these equities are up. Okay, yes, yes, this will make the average person more wealthy. Yes, what Trump's doing is classic America. Okay, yeah. But they'd all been intimidated and didn't have leadership to do this. He's now announcing Senator Jeff Sessions, who is one of the most honorable men in modern history, to be the new attorney general. Could not have had a better pick. I, I am just, it, notice it's not who they kept saying, Giuliani and people like that. Splendid, 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 delicious. Oh, oh, and it just, it just, literally, I have hundreds of articles here, each one better than the next. Just each one better than the next. Uh, just look at this on the fake news front. If we, we've looked forever for the name, the dinosaur media, the deception media, the prostitute, the scumbags, the collaborator media. But, you know, they are the fake news media, the fake corporate media. And I've called them that before, but that's the name. They're now giving us that name because we're stomping them into oblivion. The awakening is just absolutely ultra massive, colossal, gargantuan, explosive to the power of 10. And so they come out with some cat lady, nothing against cats, but I mean, it's always got to be a cat lady wearing ironic glasses. A professor made a list of what's fake, and so Google adopted it, and then Quantcast adopted it, and then we learned it's this whole way to purge libertarian and nationalistic media that's dominant. Guess what they did? Quantcast removed it and actually showed us what our ranking was today. They agreed, okay, yes, you're not fake news. Ladies and gentlemen, we just challenged him. We said, listen, I know you're a cat lady and a, and a social justice warrior, and you think men existing is bad. I mean, she literally just thinks men are bad, period. We get you. You're entitled. You think you're God. You live, you know, in, in, like a hobbit in your little uh, you know, university in fantasy world. But guess what InfoWars is? I, you know, I kept saying it was 167 as of last week. Uh, to give you an idea, Drudge is like 90-something. InfoWars.com is 126. 100, and they all they do is hook into Google Analytics. We have these numbers. We're, we're even bigger than that. Now, now here's the key. InfoWars is not the center of what we did. It's not. It's like 25%. Do you have any idea how big? I mean, I'm not even bragging. I just realized I need to throw it in the enemy's face and just laugh at them. <laughs> we're bigger than the BBC and what, like CNN combined. We're bigger than the New York Times. These people are delusional. And guess what? A Mexican kingpin, who's not even Mexican, a, a Middle Eastern kingpin doesn't finance us. Our listeners do. It's just a beautiful American system. We are wrecking you. So I want to salute DrudgeReport.com more than anybody in this fight, going back even 10 years ago, supporting us, taking a lot of heat, I know, for it. But Drudge knew we were hardcore cutting edge news, and we've developed over the years. InfoWars isn't even really a modern design. We're going to redo it soon so it looks cleaner and better like Breitbart and other sites. Uh, but, I mean, just with an old design and stuff that's like four or five years old, we are wrecking the enemy because of you. You are the InfoWar. I keep explaining it, folks. It, it isn't hype. We have 
free market culture, Americana, the apple of the world's eye. We turn the breakers back on, folks. We'll be the shining city on the hill. And that's why they're panicking with their race garbage and all of it. I mean, trying to make the new majority that is Hispanics and Asians and others feel like they can't have the American dream. That it's antithetical, that it's racist. Why'd you come here then? Because a shell of what was there is better than where you came from. I get it. You just can't come here and be indoctrinated into some brainwashed enemy of the middle class and be turned into an anti-white racist. Just, it's not going to happen. We're going to fight it. There's a lot of news on that front as well. But God forbid Trump bring back factories, air conditioning factories, refrigerator factories. The, the, hundreds of them are announcing they're staying now. Because they were just waiting for the initiative. They were waiting for the president. They were waiting for the leader. Just like in Viva Vendetta, he's talking to the inspector, and the inspector goes, why did you do it sooner? Why didn't you? He goes, I was waiting for you, man. I was waiting for a few good people on the inside. I was waiting for you. That's why they want us to start a civil war and go and shoot cops in the back of the head like that's a revolution, because that will cause us all to implode and beat each other's throats. So let me explain something. We're not out of the woods yet, but baby, we are in the lead, and it's ours to lose, and I want to thank Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, about four days before the election, I, I, I sincerely broke down and cried on air. And I used to maybe get tears in my eyes once or twice every couple years when I thought about, you know, dead family or some sad story or saw something sad on the news. I'm a sentimental guy. But the, the tears in my eyes that I get at the dinner table at night and driving home from work now probably 50 times a day sometimes is the energy of the republic coming back from the dead. These aren't tears of pain. These are tears of joy. Now, it doesn't mean we're out of the woods. It doesn't mean evil isn't spiraling out of control. It doesn't mean there's not all the nanotech and GMO and genetic engineering and all of it. But I can feel the spirit of good beginning to come back into the world right now. And people are breaking the bondage. They're coming out of the matrix. They're coming out of the lie. And it is just, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can feel it. It's like you go to a pep rally and you feel the energy or a concert. Zzz, you know, the brain waves. You can feel the electricity. And Trump feels it too. And Trump wants that positive energy. That's why he goes where the good is. That's why he it's why he he feeds off of it because he's not out to get you. You think somebody that loves sitting around in gold palaces like seeing people poor? No, he doesn't like it. The globalists, though, they admit that they engineered art and, and architecture in the last 60 years to make you feel ugly, to make you feel small, and to make you feel hopeless. Look it up. It's been declassified two years ago. CIA finance ugly architecture and art to make people feel small. That's not the CIA. That's criminals that have hijacked our government. So the social engineers want to fight. As I've always said, I don't know how this is going to end, but it's the journey is the destination. It's the fighting that God wants to see. You want to fight? You better believe you've got one. And you can misrepresent what I say and twist it all day long. People come here in much bigger numbers than they come to you, and they find out what's really going on. And quite frankly, sometimes it's embarrassing how I act. Yesterday, I was so hateful towards these people because I hate them. They're out to get me. They're my enemy. They're your enemy. I'm so pissed at looking at them that I was being very nasty. You know what? I'm proud of that. That was real. That's who I am. I love a lot. I hate a lot. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for it. I got a lot of hate. I got a lot of love. It's beyond hate. I... I they're just despicable traitor filth. I don't want to think about them. Excuse me. But I, and I, I'm not a vindictive person, but I love seeing Hillary rotting and falling apart and just seeing that witch melt in front of our eyes. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father above for your son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for goodness and thank you for everything you've done. We repent from what we've done and we commit to be better people. It is such a great time to be alive. I can feel the spirit of God rising. Oh. And then the more God comes into the world, the more just these evil people are just despicable and disgusting, aren't they? As your spirit gets stronger, you recognize them more and you can't be around them. That's what's, as we start resonating, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to just, uh, th that's why they hate us. We, they don't want us in the world, folks. We can't get along. The sheep and the goats don't coexist. Figure that out. They're not giving us quarter. None, no quarter given, none taken. We're going to run those black flags up, baby. Committed to this. 
and I can feel their howls of despair as, 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 as their lust to hurt the innocents and their lust to make people poor and their lust to dominate and break society's will as their will is broken. The greatest psyop was these controlled churches always telling you it's the end of the world right around the corner and give up because there's no point. And, you know, the devil runs everything. The devil's only here to test us, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what the future brings. Undoubtedly, revelations will be fulfilled. But in God's time, and any man that tells you he knows is an agent of the devil. That's Christ. Let no man deceive you and tell you he knows the hour of the day. It's all there. And we're going to come back, and I'm just, uh, 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 I mean, oh, my God, this is just all luscious news. There's some important things we have to look at. Uh, Western women being raped in the Middle East. When you get raped, you go to prison, even if it's admitted, because you're not a person. And, and that's why I'm a bigot, because I don't want radical Islam running our entire you know country and world. And then we've got the Islamists you know, licking their butts and stuff. That's all coming up. Uh, on, on, I'm going to show you. In Italy, people basically licking their butts. Stay with us. We are back live. You know things are different. When Trump has launched greatagain.gov. That's right, greatagain.gov. Thank you for your support. An actual federal government executive website. You can read about the president-elect, the vice president-elect, news, making America great again. Serving America, that means getting jobs in the executive branch. And I, I saw different clips last night of John Stewart and others saying, what does it mean to make it great again? No one ever asked him. No, it means cutting taxes. It means sending a lot of power back to the states. Uh, it means doing the things that made this country so successful again and not running it down all day. That's what it means. And then they sell the idea. No, it means make it white again. Ladies and gentlemen, America in most areas is 50% Hispanic now. Now, if you look at demographics, like I said, in 10, 15 years, depending on the demographics, 70% or more will be Hispanic. There have been Gallup polls where 71% of Hispanic Americans that are citizens want to control the border. Sure, every other Latin American country tries to control their border. You don't have a country if you don't. They've got new polls out where it's almost 60%. But they have brainwashed some Hispanics that if someone likes Donald Trump or someone wants to control the border that there must be racist. No, we just can't have totally open borders. No one else does. This is globalism conquering our country. You're being used to do that. I would love it if there was a Hispanic president uh, or a woman president if they were like Trump. I do not care what color their hair is or what color their skin is or what color their eyes are. I care about what's going on inside that brain. And Hillary Clinton is a demon witch has nothing to do with the fact that she's a woman. Oh, you just don't like strong women. Give me a break. Give me, I, I, I love strong women. Man, they can help me get stuff done. It's like saying, I don't want a strong wife. I don't want someone that helps me get stuff done or who's, I want, no, are you kidding? What a man's looking for is a dynamic, strong woman. It's just total insulting of reality. Are there poor white people that look around and see a bunch of Hispanics doing better than they are because they're farmer generations and are working harder and get pissed off, sure. But that that is underlying and very, very small. And it's just, again, they have tripled down on this entire race narrative. And the good news is almost no one is buying it. And when Trump delivers prosperity and the mainstream media tries to cover it up and, and sabotage it, it's going to be irrevocable. I am so glad. I was bummed out at first that mainstream media has, has just intensified their lives. But I understand that's a failed system they've been engaged in. And so th their playbook is a losing playbook. So if, if they're our enemy, we shouldn't interrupt our enemies while they're destroying themselves, should we? Now, this is a short segment. Let me tell you some of the news is coming up in detail. Look at DrudgeReport.com. Obama is over in Germany and Europe. He just left Greece yesterday. Trying to prop up globalism. And that's the headlines. Globalism in crisis. I mean, that's the Financial Times of London. You name it. Der Spiegel. I've got stacks of news. Global government's in trouble. And, and what, what does Merkel say? She says, we're not letting the EU go. German finance minister warns Britain could still be paying into Brussels coffers in 2030. They're telling him, we're not letting you go. You never voted to be part of this. You, you're not allowed to leave now. You didn't do your Article 50 right, so you can't go. 
And as I said, folks, people go, oh, Brexit's been scuttled. We knew this would happen, but the process of forcing them out in the open to say, you can't leave, we run you. <laughs> I mean, 20 years ago, you couldn't get people to admit there was a European Union being set up. It was a conspiracy theory. When I was first on air, just five years, six years before it was official, and it was already codified under law, they just hadn't announced it, kind of like the North American Union is already in place. The Asian Union's been in place for decades. They don't tell you until it's all done. And TPP was going to be done for the Asian Union, and then the Atlantic Treaty between the U.S. Uh, and um, Europe was going to uh, weld the three super states together. That's official trilateral commission info. But remember on Monday, <laughs> uh, the New York Times said Alex Jones is crazy. I have it right here. Globalism doesn't exist. Now, Obama's in Germany saying we've got to defend globalism. It's in crisis. But here's the New York Times telling its readers it doesn't exist and it's code word for anti-Semitism. <laughs> what the? Where does this crap come from? The TPP with more than 50 countries running us? What's that have to do with Jews? It's countries all the world with corporations taking over our sovereignty. They just inject that. It's like, I don't like your health care plan. It's a ripoff. Shut up, racist. What's that have to do with racism? This is a ripoff. Shut up, racist. And then that's all you've got? Conspiracy theorist, racist, and fake news. That's it. Racist, conspiracy theorist, fake news, throwing a homophobe, and you're like, when, I don't, what? I'm a libertine. Everybody knows that. What do you, stop it. Absolutely incredible. So when we come back, we got a bunch of clips. Uh, we're going to get into all of this because th their whole fake news initiative has blown up in their face spectacularly. Spectacularly. They're already reversing this this blacklist that they're sending around, you know, saying man info wars. We'll be back. Wall Street Journal. China presses tech firms to police the internet. That's a fake headline. It's a real story, but a fake headline. China isn't pressing. The Communist Party dirtbags, the biggest mass murderers in all of history. Over 100 million of their own people, 80 plus under Mao Zedong alone, who have got their people in total wicked bondage, involved in political and cultural congress with our elite are setting up a planetary system, and there they are, telling us what to do with Hollywood, telling us what to do with the Internet. You think they like the fact they can't block this show? It's very hard for them to block this transmission going into China? You think they like that? We see mainstream media, we see the Democrats saying, Zuckerberg, you better censor the web more. Zuckerberg came out this week and said, it's not that easy. It isn't just a fake news issue, and you know it. Because Peter Thiel owns part of Facebook and isn't letting him do it. I gotta say, Peter Thiel, more and more, I research him. I know he's gone to Bilderberg. I mean, and I know it's a secret meeting, it's global, it's, it's bad. But what matters is what people do in the real world. And if he's opposing tyranny, more and more, that's a good thing. And helping Trump get into office. That's why the whole Bilderberg group has been against Trump. But just a few people on the inside that aren't bad can turn this whole tide. But look at this China presses tech firms to police the internet, third annual World Internet Conference aimed at proselytizing China's view to a global audience. That's right. The big World Internet Conference is basically run by China. China is making its move. And when we say China, we mean the evil folks that run it. So we have the Chinese telling us what to do. We've got the EU telling us what to do, saying globalism's in crisis. But imagine being a New York Times writer, and you have to sit there and write articles like Gibbs did as press secretary saying the drone program doesn't exist years after it's public and been on the news a thousand times, a thousand. Globalism, a far right conspiracy theory buoyed by Trump. And we claim there's multinational corporations and multinational agreements that we're not part of and we claim it's transferring power. It's totally insane. Meanwhile, we're not letting the EU go. German finance minister warns Britain could still be paying into Brussels coffers in 2030. The rise of populism tops anxiety list at Frankfurt banking meeting. Oh, the anxiety. Oh. Globalist plot survival. I wish I could come up with terms like that. Because that's, that's what's happening. Globalists are plotting their very survival. As they said in every globalist publication, our world government 
is in crisis. Our planetary plan we've been doing for 60 years is going to fall if Donald Trump gets elected. After Brexit and Russia pulling out, this is a beautiful thing. Hey, the Russian agent Trump just got Ford to stay in the U.S. The Russian agent uh, is, is trying to get uh, Apple, and they're saying they're going to do it probably, back to the United States. It's factories. Oh, the iPhone will go up $5. Yeah, we'll actually have an economy. Big deal. Isn't that just amazing? Oh, my gosh, the Russian agent. Boy, I would need more of these Russian agents then, don't we? The Russian agent just is moving to have the attorney general be Senator Jeff Sessions, the total patriot. Oh, my gosh, those those dirty Ruskies again. Truth is, there was no Ruskies involved with Trump. And now everybody sees how ridiculous that whole thing was. No, it's the globalists shutting off our power, shutting off our coal plants, shutting off our factories, shutting off our steel mills by design. And Trump's just going to flip the switches. He's 62 days from office and already Apple's coming back. Ford's announced it's definitely staying. New factories are being announced all over the place. Power plants are now being told they can be turned back on that are totally clean. Oh, they can now compete. Oh, sorry, General Electric. You thought you'd double and triple prices and you did. Your little honeymoon screwing everybody over is bye bye. <laughs> and then wait till people's power bill goes down the evil city of austin the people that run it there's not real elections here this place is not a real elections in decades i've seen it certified at the state board level by complaints i filed they admitted it but still certified it the city owned four power plants one was old should have shut it down three were new and they shut them all down, didn't even sell them. They said, no, we own them. We want to shut them down. One part is left. It's the giant Fayetteville plant, 50-something miles from Austin. It didn't shut off. One-third of it's still on. But it supplies something like 10% of Houston's power. Austin owned the other plants there and just shut them off. They're just shut off. Gigantic, clean, modern, multi-billion dollar power plant. That's military sabotage. That's globalism hurting you and your family and the evil racist donald trump wants to turn it back on and give you cheap electricity oh what a horrible man oh my gosh and you see all these poor disheveled hopeless people they can be black they can be hispanic white they all look stupid and and panicked and scared and just running around like the government's their mommy and they're in a jail cell hoping the little a window opens and a little plate of food comes in in Venezuela, I remember hearing about this from a Venezuelan fellow who worked here in IT, and then I later saw it in the news. They make you pray to Hugo Chavez for your school lunch in the morning. They have you pray to Christ and no food comes. Then you pray to Chavez and milk and cereal comes. Talk about desperate. Talk about sad. Talk about unbelievably horrible. This is what we're entering into, and America has been given a reprieve. All I care about is delivery. I don't care who he appoints or what he does. I've said that. It, there have been some indicators I don't like, some things I do like. Look at Sessions. Look at Stephen Bannon. This is beautiful. All right, I need to start getting into the news here. Uh, just briefly, let me get into some of the most important and exciting news and information first. The story is up on Infowars.com. It's got some very powerful videos that Paul Watson cut, uh, breaking down the hypocrisy and the lies. The mainstream media fake news narrative is already beginning to collapse. Quantcast restores InfoWars blacklist of fake news websites removed from Quantcast. They had accepted the Google Chrome that had loaded in a liberal social justice warrior female professor who just, she's judge, jury, executioner. She just decides what's fake now. She's God, like the Snopes lady. She has a cat. She lives in an apartment. That's fine. She is God. She arbitrates. Obamacare is free. Of course, it isn't. There is no IRS mandate. Of course, there is. There is no death panel. Of course, there is. But, but listen, Snopes said it, it isn't there, okay? <laughs> All right, so yeah, here, there you go. And this lady said so. So yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Boy, we're so fake. Oh, we said Donald Trump would win and the polls were fake. Of course, we didn't just think that. I had the inside intel. That's why Trump's like, it's rigged. It's rigged. They don't want to tell people we're way ahead in the internal polls because they would sound like a sore loser. But they knew. From the media, from the New York Times, the Osberg Statesman, Jones keeps claiming that, you know, that the internal polls show he's really way ahead. Oh, 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 oh. Who was right? That's right. See, because we tell the truth here. 
That's what we do. We don't sit around out to get people all day like you people. So, the mainstream media fake news narrative is already beginning to collapse after the author of a blacklist of fake news websites removed the list because you can get sued for that, sweetheart. And Quantcast reinstated Infowars.com to its ranking as the 126. <laughs> that's not news site, folks. That's site period in the world. Most traffic website in the world. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just relishing the fact that we are kicking their butt up one side and down the other. Woo! I mean, when it comes to news, I think only the mighty Drudge Report. Let's let's pull it up on Quantcast, like 98 or something. O only Drudge is bigger. We are slaughtering them. Drudge is 102. It fluctuates back and forth. Just slaughtering them. And by the way, the big news websites all have these weird little bots and stuff that republish their stuff and play games and manipulate. No, no, no. We don't have any of that on. We just bare knuckles annihilate them. And again, InfoWars is 20-something percent, depending on the day, of our reach. We have big algorithm systems in there, computer models, Google, you name it, that, that war game it all. And, and we don't even really use that stuff. We just kind of go look at it and go, good God, look at that. It's like Death Star level firepower just blowing the enemy to pieces. And the enemy just hops up and down and goes, we're wearing fancy suits and we're at CNN. And then no one listens to them. And they're just caught fake news, fake reporters, fake everything, just spewing disinfo, giving all the questions to Hillary beforehand, just all sorts of evil activity. Just think about that. So the mainstream media is fake news. Yesterday, we reported how Quantcast had apparently delisted Infowars.com at the same time that the mainstream media was circulating a list of fake news websites that included big conservative news outlets such as Infowars and Breitbart. Infowars has also been reinstated as Quantcast's list of top websites and has skyrocketed to 126 on the list. Now, before I go any further, I want to just make a point here. Normally, a news, uh, news organization this big would bring in billions of dollars. I'm good at reaching people, thank God, and because you spread the word, but I'm not good at making money. And we need to bring in a ton of money. I, need, I have the responsibility to hire four or five more reporters, camera people, editors, and, and, and other things we need. I mean, we are on a shoestring budget comparatively. If I was in New York or someplace, I could have 15, 20 employees, not 60. But when I say employees, that's like janitorial stuff, accounting, uh, customer service, our own warehouse for shipping. I mean, when you're talking about news folks, it's like 25 people total. We need 30, 40, 50 people. I mean, we've got the staff of a small town newspaper and we are changing the world. But I, I, I don't have the big corporate sponsors. I sell products. That's how we fund ourselves. And I have this penchant for trying to give people good deals because that's just how I am. Nine ninety five for the Trump is my president shirt. That includes shipping. We don't make any money on that. But I, it's so effective, people buy five times more if I sell it at cost. So I just want to see Trump's my president everywhere. So see, to get the message out, I sabotage our overall capitalization. So I'm just saying, there's nowhere you can spend money that will have a bigger effect than Infowars.com or clicking on the ads on DrudgeReport.com. There is nowhere. So when you get brain force or you get, look how good our info is. Look how effective and cutting edge. Try the nutraceuticals. Try the supplements. We've got the very best heirloom non-GMO seed varieties. What, 15, 14 different companies at the lowest prices you're going to find out there. Uh, we've got a Made in America apparel. Infowarsstore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And I want to thank you for what you've done so far. But it's time for... Most of the people, I mean, we we know because, again, it's all algorithms. That's how the Internet works, that maybe 4% of the folks that come through ever buy anything. If 10% bought something, we could double in size, triple in size, and I am committed to go all the way. We could do so much more if we have a Washington bureau that's permanent in, 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 uh, you know, in New York. We already have folks in London. I'd like to expand and actually set an office up in London and have Paul launch a, a whole TV operation there. Uh, still a small operation, but, but very effective. Um, I, mean, I don't want to grow, but it's our responsibility. I'm not going to sit here and, and have half measures with the enemy. I'm not risking my life to play games. I want to press the issue and run them to ground and then give them no quarter politically and strafe them into oblivion. And we can do that if we keep our eye on the prize and have the eye of the tiger and are savage in this fight.
Now we have Brain Force Plus in now with 20% more capsules, and it's got an even stronger formula. It's been tweaked. Brain Force Plus, an amazing nootropic, now back in stock. InfoWarsLife.com takes you right to the subpage that has all of our supplements. InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. Also, the great longevity line uh, of supplements. When you purchase it at InfoWarsTeam.com, you can sign up to be a distributor and get big discounts. You can also get free shipping when you sign up for auto ship there. InfoWarsTeam.com. And it, it roughly, I don't know, 6 7 8% of that purchase goes to fund our operation as well when you get high-quality nutraceuticals and supplements at InfoWarsTeam.com. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. And I want to thank everybody for your support there as well. You can also call toll-free. And the uh, number is there on the website at the top of the site. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, uh, Pollen Burst, Osseo FX, Rebound, and so much more at InfoWarsTeam.com. It's really InfoWars Health, but I haven't updated that website yet. So just go to InfoWars, InfoWarsTeam.com. Uh, now, expanding on that, um, we have PrisonPlanet.tv that has the nightly news for subscribers. I want to thank all those old subscribers. 20 people can use each membership there. Also, we have the new app that's $4.95 a month that we are now uploading special, exclusive, behind-the-scenes videos, live videos, special documentaries, you name it. There's now over 100 pieces of new original content there, but the real reason to have it is that there are discounts of up to 50%. The biggest sales we have are exclusive to members of the app. There's a free version, infowars.com forward slash app that has the daytime video feed, audio feeds, podcasts, news articles, you name it. But the, but the paid one has the live feeds, uh, the archives, the discounts, and news alerts that we send to you that, that we're about to start. Uh, we're still tweaking a few things, but I'd say it's running about 98%. So Infowars.com forward slash app. Also, it's key if they start censoring more. You never know what they could do. You set off a nuke, Lord knows what, and Infowars will be gone overnight. Only a fraction of the folks that are listeners have ever gone to Infowars.com forward slash uh, newsletter and signed up for our free email newsletter that has exclusive videos, articles, promo codes, you name it. And I know everybody's sick of email. I'm sick of it too. But 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 with Infowars and our relationship, it's 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 important that we have your email. So infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Go there today. And it is so essential that you then take our emails and forward them to folks because this is how we get key intel out and talking to all the experts. It's essential. This is something I never did. I mean, back in the age of email being top, uh, we'd have tens of millions of folks signed up if I'd have just done it. Only started the last few years promoting it. And hundreds of thousands of people have come and signed up, but it's just a fraction. Only, you know, 400,000 people or whatever have downloaded the free app. I mean, you know, we're 126 on the Internet, just on our website. We, we've we had 5 billion views conservatively on YouTube, and all we can get is 400,000 people to download the free app. I mean, I'm not bitching, but Drudge is right. We have to have our own platform separate from them that aren't as easy to censor. I mean, you know, we they censor us. We point it out. You point it out. They back off, but they keep coming back which is a tactic, so it's an eternal battle. Bottom line, thank you all for your support. You are the info war. That's not rhetoric. It's true. You did this. Savor it. The crew did it. Our sponsors, our local affiliates, support them. We're going to come back and get to the really shocking news, though. I've covered a lot of positive news. I want to get into what the Islamists are up to, I mean, and just why I don't want to visit these countries or bring this here. I'm sorry. We, we have literal, well, I'm just, it's, it's indescribable. We are back live. We got a bunch of big guests joining us today. True heroes like James O'Keefe from Project Veritas and more. Dr. Steve Pachinik. Roger Stone. I talked to him last night. He wanted to come on. I don't know if that's been lined up. But we are working on it right now. Speaking of sponsors, it's not just the products we sell at InfoWarsStore.com. It's the great folks uh, like Chuck Underseas that put out the amazing film with Charlie Daniels, General Boykin, Joel Skousen, and myself, and many others. It covers Agenda 21, the whole New World Order, the Federal Reserve, how evil it is, how it is a devilish system. Very powerful film. Everybody needs to see it. Visit revelationthemovie.info to purchase the DVD or check into hosting at a theater near you. That's revelationthemovie.info. And buy a couple copies. This guy put everything he had into this film. It took him five years to make it, and it's just a very important film. Stone's on at 1230. So he's on in about 40 minutes. So revelationthemovie.info to purchase or to set up a screening in your area. That's what's really, really effective. Because don't think we can back off now that we're starting to turn the tide. The fight's just begun. I mean, we've got to intensify uh, our operations, uh, obviously. By the way, 
Daria, one of the producers, was pointing out, yeah, you're not bashing China enough. They loaded 70 million Americans' phones with spyware and stuff to basically steal your bank account information and rob you. I mean, folks, our, our military hardware, that came out 10 years ago, they're doing that or longer. China is literally all over us. Every movie I go see about science fiction or technology, China runs everything and is our boss. Every movie. Every movie. You'll notice it. I I, I, I remember seeing this like five years ago. Now it's every movie. And now they announce China's taken over. That means communist Chinese. They're in the news saying censor the internet in America. How about you go to hell, okay? I had China. Paul doesn't want me to get into it. Paul had China basically come after a mess with him in, in London three years ago. Oh, yeah, folks, we're not in Kansas anymore. We're talking James Bond movie stuff. So understand, folks, believe me, there's a lot more going on you don't know about. This country is under full scale attack. The people we've got in aren't perfect, but they are not out to get the nation. Do you understand? And people better decide which side they're on right now. The Russians aren't doing anything. They're seen as destabilized. The globalists are trying to bring them down. Just like they're bringing us down. I'm going to say it very slowly. The globalists are allied with China against the United States and Russia. The EU is meant to destroy Europe and suck it down. It wants to destroy the third world. The globalists are against humanity. It's a scientific system that deindustrializes you. I'll use the oblivion analogy. It's like a big alien spaceship that lands and sucks up your oceans, kills your planet, and leaves, okay? It's cold-blooded, it's scientific, it's psychopathic, it's the enemy. You better understand the real system in the world. And I, and I know you know that. I haven't gotten to it yet. I'll cover it the next five minutes. I don't want to bash Muslims. I don't want to bash the communist Chinese, but they're horrible. They're out of control, folks. I mean, you know, It's like saying I don't want to bash Germans in World War II, but they had a bad leadership and a bad culture at that time. I'm going to say the Nazis were bad. Ladies and gentlemen... Most of these Muslim countries, women are kept as basically property. And then the left has this fetish about Islam all day. British woman gang raped in Dubai says, I'm petrified out here alone after she's arrested for extramarital sex. She goes and complains she's raped. And they go, sweetheart, there ain't no such thing. You're, you're, you're not, a man can do whatever he wants with you. So, there's another one. Shock video, police force 80-year-old Italian hotel owner to house African migrants. This this is just commandeering. It's just this little bitty inn with this little old man. And the police just show up and say, you're going to house North Africans. And you're in Germany, they tell people, we're moving people into your house. I mean, this is incredible, folks. And the government, the Pope says, come, come. But he's got 200-foot walls. And then it gets worse. Video shows migrant in Italy washing his anus in public and then licking his hand. This is cultural enrichment. Folks, they get in the pool and just start crapping everywhere, just shooting feces everywhere. And then everyone just, enrichment, enrichment. They rape children in the pools. I mean, my God, and the inbreeding. Thank you for listening. It's to hillbilly GCN. Muslims, folks. I'm telling you right now. We'll be back. The Japanese are really concerned about China as well, so Trump knows who to meet with first. A lot of good things happening. It's good to have somebody that's not out to get the country in office, isn't it? A lot of people say, what are you going to do now? You're the one always on the outside bitching. We've st still got all the globalists to fight. But if we ever turn things around really good, I'd be like, let's, you know, deliver food aid to the third world. Or let's try to, you know, I mean, I already fund with charities. I don't, I don't have a lot of money, but I pay for wells in Africa and wells in places like Paraguay. And uh, the CAF program, I've been involved with that with my grandmother for a long time. Um, I mean, I don't know. I think I gave just... $10,000 for cows for Africans last year. And I'll never talk about that stuff. I'm there and brag about it, but you can really help somebody paying for a wind turbine in a village, paying for wells in a village, paying for, by the whole village, you know, a couple calves a piece. That's the kind of stuff I do. It's really cheap. Some good programs out there. And it's because I want to help humanity. I want that spirit to grow where people then want to help me. It's, 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 and, and then to be called racist, it's, it's just, I'm just, I'm just done. Meanwhile, look at the Middle East, folks. I mean, it's some of the most backwards areas in the world. And our government under Obama and Hitlery went in and blew up any of the pro real progressives. Gaddafi was building up all of North Africa. He was unit building huge aquifer facilities, runways, businesses. 60% of graduates from school were, were women. Uh, Christians were left alone all over. 
Jihadis now run Libya. It's a failed state. And then meanwhile, British woman gang raped in Dubai says, I'm petrified out here alone after she's arrested for extramarital sex. That's the mirror. Jane Mosey, 25, has spoken about her nightmare. She got raped, talked about it, and then they arrested her for the men raping her. And that's liberal. But oh my gosh, I'm a mis misogynist white male out to get women. Hey, dumbasses, the West is where women got their liberation, dumbasses. That's the thing about the left. They're not the left. They're such scum. They run around inverting reality, and I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. And I love when they try to guilt me. I told you about not this Halloween, because I'm doing anything this Halloween, but I had an office party the Halloween before, and we were in a couple different places. I had three different people come over and say, are you a Nazi? Because I was wearing an airline captain hat and a black shirt and purple pants. And when I wouldn't kiss their ass, they'd get in my face, and I'd say, listen, you're just a mental patient wanting to control my life, you little freak. Now, let's go to the next one here. Shock video. Let's roll this for TV viewers. It's up on InfoWars.com. Paul Watson article. Police force 80-year-old Italian hotel owner to house African migrants. And I showed this. Oh, you know. Uh, and they just come in and just fill up his little bitty uh, inn and his little bitty restaurant. And the police just show up and say, you're going to take care of these people. And by the way, you're going to do it for free. And people say, oh, well, don't be racist. Can I go to Africa and do this? Are these cops taking people into their houses? Hell no. They've got their big, a fancy Italian, you know, uniforms that look so good. They always pick some you know, little sad man to do it to. Same thing in Germany. This is Merkel. Come here. Come here. Come here. Meanwhile, let's play this video out of Italy. This is what you see when you're in Italy, folks. And the gypsies walk up to you like they want to kill you with hate. You're supposed to go, oh, I'm liberal. Slit my throat. You're so trendy. A video shows migrant, let's roll it, in Italy, washing his anus at a public fountain, cultural enrichment at its best. And then he wipes his ass with the same hand and then drinks it. Oh, yeah, this is genius. And now we've got cholera and, and plague and, uh, oh, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Leprosy's made a comeback in Europe and here. Wonderful, wonderful. Don't even teach him how to use a toilet. No, 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 no. Don't even test people at the border. The Pope said bring them, but never at his little degenerate command base. They're at the uh, Vatican. They're at the uh, pedophile command base. Or, or I guess kind of WikiLeaks showed New York's kind of that, too. There's many pedophile capitals, I mean. All right, more true, accurate, hardcore news straight ahead. Unabashed, unapologetic. Well, Trump is still 62 days out from office to be number 45 president of the United States of America. Trump to be POTUS. And already Ford's announced he's not leaving with that SUV plant from Kentucky. Other major plants, I've got a list here, announcing they're going to stay in areas like Ohio uh, and Texas as well. And Apple's announcing that they think they're going to move one of their big plants, making iPhones and other Apple products, back to the United States. They haven't manufactured here in 20 years. And he's not even in office yet. He has now announced that his attorney general, should he be confirmed by the Senate, Senator Jeff Sessions, that's going to happen. Very honorable man, could not think of a better choice. That guy is, does not deal in politics when it comes to justice. People better look out, and let me tell you, Hillary is going to get in big trouble. Jeff Sessions never compromises, never backs down, and is one of the best people we've got in our government. So Trump is really delivering Stephen Bannon uh, at the head of the entire strategy operation. Could not be a better choice. That's why they're calling him a racist and never showing any proof. They call James O'Keefe a racist. They call me one with no proof. It doesn't work anymore, but they've only... Tripled down is the term, or maybe quintupled down, with, with all their lies and disinfo, what's going to happen? Uh, James O'Keefe joins us. Uh, he, uh, I just, I just, he said, well, sure, I'll come on, but why? Well, I want a victory lap, but also where you see all this going with your expertise, uh, other goodies that are going to be coming out, because obviously we've got to hold uh, our foot to the neck of these people. We may be a little bit euphoric. We're having some victories right now, but you better believe they are coming back with an incredible vengeance. So the man that heads up Project Veritas, uh, one of the undoubted MVPs. And, and look, it's, it's not about credit, but we have to single out who is the most effective. And it is James O'Keefe. It is Julian Assange. It is Matt Drudge. 
It is Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, these are the type of folks we need to celebrate, and but also the listeners of this broadcast and my crew and just everybody in the Liberty Movement. It isn't about credit, but man, we've been the underdog for a long time, and Trump is really starting to deliver. Now, I haven't talked to o o O'Keefe uh, since before the election. I don't know his view on all this. We'll see if he concurs or what he adds. ProjectVeritas.com. James, congratulations, my friend. Hey, Alex, thank you so much. And just uh, by way of introduction, I, I've, I've had a chest cold the last few days I've, I've, after a week of adrenaline uh, and, and un unbelievable, amazing highs and amazing lows. I'm, I'm recovering here physically, so I apologize. I'm not 100%, but I'm, it's so great to be with you. Well, uh, absolutely, my friend. I know I've, I was exhausted for three or four days as well, kind of like dizzy, actually, but I'm now back to normal. Hopefully you get back soon. Where do you want to start? Well, I think I think that one of the things that Roger Stone and I discussed last time I was with you was the was the tipping point that we thought that we had not reached as a country. I think we are now beyond the tipping point where social media uh, and the power of independent media is is greater. It is greater than um, than the mainstream media. We have reached that tipping point. We are at a point where the 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 power of the media is now not what it once was. When I was at that election night, uh, Hilton Hotel, and I saw the big lights and the, the hundreds of journalists, I could see them physically sobbing. I could see them crying because they had now realized that they had lost their power. And, and it was a very moving moment for me because we have spent, I've spent the last eight years of my life fighting these people tooth and nail persevering over their firewall, breaking news on YouTube, even while these companies like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter try to shut us down. And, and to reach that climax where now we are now more powerful than they are. It was a very touching moment for me and, and uh, it, it showed that it, the whole game has now changed. We are living in a new world where we are now more powerful than they are. And that's just that's just the bottom line. And Trump has to realize that. And we did this. I'm not just saying it, it's true from the grassroots because we really believed in America, in free market, in the Second Amendment. They were trying to dominate us and studying history and studying uh, past wars. And this is a new type of war, an information war predominantly. You never know when an evil empire is about to break up. You never know when it's about to fall. It's going to tell you to the minute you know, that the evil king kills over that it's victorious, it's all powerful, it's unstoppable. And th th this system was so delusional, they were believing their own BS. I mean, listen, when Infowars.com, which is most people are obsessed with their site, it's a small part of our overall reach, 23% according to the Google algorithm on a daily basis, it's 19%, 25%, but average is 23% uh, year end. We're, we're number 124 on the web, folks. We, d we have reached 5 billion people on YouTube alone. Uh, and this just shows what InfoWars is doing, and we're not even getting started. Imagine how much that freaks them out, uh, James O'Keefe. Yeah, I mean, we, we were when we were uh, on. I was on, I think, uh, Tommy Loren's Facebook live stream, and and there were like 1.7 million people watching it. And CNN's Brian Stelter, this is a reliable sources. Then the show is called Reliable Sources. He tweets at me, and he goes. You know, James, we st we got 1.2 million viewers on CNN, and I said, Brian, we got 20 million views on our YouTube channel in the last week. We got 100 million Twitter impressions. You know, you you, you nobody watches CNN. They're delusional. When you're in airports, they, they are delusional. They're losing. The bottom line is, Alex, is they realize they are losing their power. That's it. They're they're losing their control over the voter. And they're losing their power over the people and they panic and they get emotional. And when they get emotional, they make mistakes. And then when they make mistakes, they lose their credibility and the audience, that is the American people, leave them and they go to or organizations like InfoWars and organizations like Project Veritas. And they go to where the action is, the excitement. And, and, and by the, the way, audience. there's only six or seven networks and systems. Their audience is so tiny now. Even Fox is nothing compared to the independent media, but they're still so delusional and nothing against Fox, but they just don't know it yet. And we're not bragging. We're just explaining, folks, the new media uh, landscape for everybody. There are high school people and college kids that are getting 100 million views a month. There are hundreds of prominent people that have just suddenly popped up that are huge. I'm excited to see that. I, I mean, what's scary to the establishment is there's we're not just getting the regular news audience. 
uh, the liberty movement has expanded to where this is almost like a blood sport or a new form of entertainment. We're making politics fun again. And I think that's where they lost the paradigm is the, uh, the, the memes and all of is what I'm getting at. Yeah, well, when we were, Alex, before, uh, uh, after I spoke with you last time on election day, we were in Philadelphia exposing voter fraud. And it was easy to expose. I mean, we, we released videos on election day in Philadelphia where we would go to the poll site and, you know, with a hidden camera, we'd go up to the to the supervisor, the judge, and they told us who to vote for. That's a crime. You can't do that. They were saying, vote for Hillary. I mean, these are election judges. These are supposed to be making sure that these elections are conducted fairly and without bias. And as I was in my car driving around Philadelphia with my team going, frankly, some of us were risking our safety to do this because these were in neighborhoods where people were intimidating people. They wouldn't let you in as a journalist. We were going around. I was tweeting live streaming that I was doing this. I was monitoring fraud and these journalists were attacking, t t I mean, viciously attacking us, calling us racist and, and, and I mean, every one of them. And it, it dawned upon me when I was in my car driving around North Philadelphia there getting attacked. I realized, you know what? These guys are so desperate. They are so, they are, they are such losers. They're stuck in their cubicles wherever they are in their skyscrapers attacking citizen journalists for doing the jobs themselves. It dawned upon me that this is now a turning point. That I'm out there, where we are out there collectively doing their jobs for them while they condemn us. And, and it's that realization, it's that, it's, it's, it, I don't know what else to put it, it's a tipping point. It's a shift in the power and perception of media. And I totally agree. And that is now James O'Keefe, here's the next question then. How do they strike back? Well, we've seen them with this delisting uh, with Google Chrome and Quantcast, but one day after they did it, they relisted InfoWars and Breitbart and others because everybody looked at it and said, some professor just declares she's God and says what's real and what isn't after this entire mainstream media got caught faking polls, faking election results, f giving the questions to Hillary, fake interviews. I mean, I, I, I've looked for names for the mainstream media all these years. They finally gave it to us. They're the fake media by them calling us that. I finally realized that's really the, their name, don't you think? I, I think you have to. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I'm looking at the same thing. That that fake list of fake news sites where uh, where they where we we made the list of fake. Uh, news oh, you were on there too, absolutely. Mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, listen. This is what I would say to that: judge a man by his work product, not by the name you used to describe him. They're obsessed with titles and 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 and. What, do you call you an activist or a criminal or a fake or a hoaxer? Judge someone by what they do. Judge Veritas, our organization, by what we expose. You guys and are so clean and so good and so hardworking and so dedicated and so classical journalism. And, and, and then they go, oh, he's a, he's a convicted criminal, not saying you went in a federal building, a public building, to show that their phones weren't broken. And I mean, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Bob Creamer was actually a convicted felon. That, that's, that's even Anderson Cooper on CNN struggled with attacking me for being a criminal because they're trying to defend actual convicted felons that we're exposing. But this is what this is the bottom line. You, your question was, where do we go from here? And my answer is, you do the job for them. You do their work. You do the investigative report and you expose the corrupt administrative agencies. By the way, our government mostly consists of administrative agencies who are not even accountable to the executive branch. This is the permanent sort of infrastructure that exists of our federal government. You do the job. You you report the the abuses of power. You expose the corruption. You these protests that are happening for the inauguration day. Veritas has people in, in investigating and embedded in those. You expose what's actually happening, and people that is the American people will naturally go to where the actual journalists exactly is. so so it's it, it, it's a total tipping point except for the minority of people who are white black hispanic you name it that really are anti-white racist butthurt weirdos like de blasio with his crew uh you know de blasio there in new york the mayor mikhail Thelen has an article spokesman says sign was meant to protest white supremacy it says f whiteness black lives matter with a bunch of weirdo straight-laced, chicken-necked, uh, neurotic white liberals running around bashing white people when the average white person I know is just a, you know, regular schmo like anybody else. 
I mean, it is. The, what is this? Obs it's 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 really. These are sickening people. These are racist, and and I, I mean, and, and, and I, I'm so tired of them. Well, we we did a story uh, on election day, day before election day. We went into in Mayor De Blasio's district, New York City. We went into the poll location of Huma Abedin, and we got offered her ballot. They handed us Huma Abedin's ballot. We had full burqa on, because the elections commissioner. We did another video where the elections commissioner was saying that anybody can vote without an ID. There's so much fraud. We bust people around. So Mayor de Blasio fired, this is yesterday, fired this elections commissioner we caught on tape for telling the truth. I think he should have been given a medal. He was being honest. He was he was forthcoming about the fraud. He was describing that they go to places like certain neighborhoods like Chinatown and they, quote, bust people around to vote. They put them in a bus and they go from poll site to poll site. So Mayor de Blasio fired the elections commissioner for revealing the fraud. Uh, this is how corrupt Mayor de Blasio is. But listen, people, I, 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 can't, I can't say it enough. Just citizens have to do their job. Places like Reddit were crowdsourcing investigative journalism out during the last few weeks. They were looking through FEC disbursement forms. They were giving that to us while these journalists in their ivory towers were condemning us. There, but there's that picture right now. De Blasio demands resignation of elections official. Who actually told um, the truth and said it's wrong that there's fraud and he wants to stop it. And then he gets, <laughs> how about de Blasio resigns? So, 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 so let's expand on this briefly. I forgot that. Uh -huh. It's beautiful how Reddit and all these other big sites are crowdsourcing the WikiLeaks crowdsourcing election research this is human this is this is the people making it a game to fight corruption that's what they've always been afraid of it's fun it's an animating contest that jefferson talked about yeah and and one of the most enlightening moments of my of the last 45 days when, when i was breaking these stories and day and the washington post tweeted at me and said why don't you actually show me a video of obama meeting with these people, show me the video. And I tweeted back, I said, hey, Dave, shouldn't that be your job? Isn't that your job at the Washington Post? But they're, they're totally reactive. They, they're, you couldn't even break a Woodward and Bernstein style story these they're days. They're a bunch Woodward of white shoe, arrogant Harvard snobs. They push classism and racism because that's who they are. We're just gutter brawling, blue collar patriots. And we're gonna kick their ass every time. Yes, and they're reactive, and they are reactive to what we do. That's the beautiful part. They're, they're now talking about what we are talking about. We set the narrative now. Yes, they criticize us. They call us names, but they can name call all they want. Judge a man by his work. Judge a, Oh, don't you love how they call us fake news and, and they call us alt-right? Exactly. We're not going by their labels anymore. Well, they said to Steve Bannon, they said... They called him a white supremacist. I mean, I know Steve Bannon. I've worked for Steve Bannon. He's not a white supremacist. He's a he's a hardworking, very, he's a good businessman. Every everyone at, at at Breitbart News is they're decent people. They have their views. But you know what I say? I say if the media wants to hashtag stop Bannon, they should endorse him because at this point, the people are going to do the exact opposite of whatever the media tells them to do. Bannon the is a trailblazer. Is is a trailblazer and took Breitbart in the right direction and helped win this election. Again, America is about betting on the people that are trailblazers who do the right thing and win. These are winners we're talking about. Absolutely. And I think the media, people are now going to do the exact opposite of what the media tells them to do. They've, they're, the, the, the vaulted, as Britt Hume said, the, the vaulted power of the media is not what it once was. Their entire business model is based on credibility and when they and, and relevance. And then we and when they become irrelevant, when people don't trust them anymore, we're living in a, a new world. It really is historical. I can't, Alex, I can't emphasize just how big, how game changing, how transformative the last couple of weeks are. And we are the tip of the spear, buddy. We are, we are it. I mean, this is. We are at the at the front lines of, of, of democracy, of information. And we're on the we front lines of the rebirth of our constitutional republic and the new renaissance, my friend. And when we get when we get thousands of people every single day, and that is true, uh, we, we, today we got hundreds of, of tips. And people say, come to my, my school board, come to my come to my town council, come to my state office. And expose this. And the pro secret pro. is you're going to expose a lot of it, but they're all copying Veritas in your book that lays out how to do it and how to do it legally and lawfully as investigative journalists. They're now all starting their own little town watches. And, 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 and again, the return of America's here. It is horrifying them.
Yes, it is. It, it is horrifying them, but we have a responsibility to build a institution. You're right. People are going to do it on their own, and that's important. We're going to, as long as it's legal. No, I mean, I mean, I'm mean, i saying they should go to you as well, but I'm just saying don't wait for orders from headquarters, folks. Just do it. Yeah, just go out and like Reddit. The Reddit community is a great example. These are people who crowdsourced it out. They went, they found Zulema Rodriguez was the protester who shut down the highway in Arizona during that video series. People found little video clips of her and they said, that's her, that's Zulema. She was paid by Hillary Clinton. So people are doing it themselves. And it, it is a beautiful thing to watch. The, the, the normal people doing the job of NBC News while NBC News puts insurmountable obstacles in their path. It is very, it is moving to watch wow. the fact that this is happening. James, I've been interviewing you probably eight, nine, ten years, whatever it is, and I tell you, you were on fire. I mean, even though you're under the weather, I've never heard you so excited. Is there a feeling, not of completion, but of satisfaction that, wow, we are on the right side of history. There is a God. We've had this great victory. We've got more work to do, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes the good guys win. Yeah, I don't know if you, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I myself am Catholic, so I'm, a, I'm a man of God. I, I, I believe that there is, um, I, it's satisfying. It's, it's redemption. Be, being there that night, seeing this happen, I think we're given another chance as a country to, um, you know, Benjamin Franklin said, "It's a republic if you can keep it." You can right? feel the providence, so, can't you, in the air? I can feel I can feel the province because there are too many. This investigation took us a year to do. Too many things could have gone wrong. It was so risky. It was so dangerous. I mean, we were invited to the White House. We could not go. It's the equivalent to use a cheesy analogy of like you did five Death Star runs and every time you blew it up. I mean, it was just all was yeah. incredible. Yes, and I think so. I think we've been given another chance. This is we we have an opportunity here to reverse course and i think that the, i think the solutions are beyond the legislative process i think it's going to require normal people doing extraordinary things and to see the, the hundreds of thousands of people in this country take it upon themselves to do the job of the media that to me shows us that there, there's much hope for the future so it's redemption sure. it's satisfaction and it's hope and it's the fact that the battle's not won even though we're starting to turn the tide you know i forget who said it we can look it up uh but uh, they say that uh, it is it is it is great times. It is it is tumultuous times. It is it is extraordinary times that make extraordinary men and women. And I think that's what we've seen here. Absolutely. In closing, Trump, uh, Ford coming back, uh, Apple saying they're going to look at coming back. All I mean, it's just it's it's too it, it's crazy. I'm really worried they're going to try to kill him. Well, I mean, I, if if there's ever a plot to do anything like that, my my hope is that our cameras would be would be uh, infiltrating conversations to that effect. And hell, they're Alex, all over we, the news saying kill him. Uh, why aren't these people being arrested saying kill Trump? I'm going to kill Trump. You know, they what, what? they're on Twitter saying they want to kill both you, me, and Trump. And and Jack Dorsey is not kicking them off. Recall that Jack Dorsey is now see Twitter is now removing people on Twitter. They removed me. They reinstated me. But James I think Wood has I left Twitter. Uh, What's that? Uh, James Wood has had to leave t uh, Twitter. Uh, we also have yeah. uh, Milo has been banned. I mean, that it's, it's horrible. There's a number of people that have left Twitter. They tried to ban me, but then 30,000 people sent emails to Twitter and they reinstated. So, look, I can't reveal everything we're doing, but we're going to be on the front lines exposing all of this. And uh, if there ever was a conspiracy to commit fraud, my, my, my hope is that our people would be embedded in there to to catch them in the act. That's all I can say. Yeah, if you're working at a big corporation and you see them colluding to suppress free speech and racketeer, record it. Send it to Infowars. Send it to James O'Keefe. Put it out. James O'Keefe, thanks for spending time with the Project Veritas.com. Uh, you're amazing. Your whole crew's amazing. And I want to just say as one American, as one Christian to another, I salute you. And it's great in this short life to be associated with folks like you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Alex. We're going to come back with Roger Stone, and I'll probably open the phones up as well. I just, uh, wow. This is really good. This is really good stuff's happening. We had concerns about two companies out of China, which are the ones that are uh, the cell phone manufacturers, Huawei and ZTE. Their ties to the People's Liberation Army, the fact that generals are running this, and a House Select Committee on Intelligence issued a report in 2012 talking about the dangers of this. So now what you have, Liz, is you've got pre-installed spying software. They say, oh, this was a mistake. We didn't mean to have this on American phones. You've got 700 million phones. You're collecting data. You know where it's coming from. So I don't think it's a mistake that they were collecting this information. It was 
found in it. Right, that's good. That's from that Fox dated? Business uh, actually doing their job. The best stuff is on Fox Business on mainstream TV. The best is Fox Business. It's almost as good as InfoWars sometimes. But notice that's not what the general Fox viewers are getting. It's very sad. But that's because smart business viewers want real information. They don't want a bunch of bull. I had to play that clip because last hour, I, I, I have to correct myself. I said 70 million phones uh, had the software loaded on. I apologize. It's 700 million. And, and I've said this many times. Nine times out of 10, I'm not exaggerating. I tend to dial stuff back. It's a real problem I've got. I'm not trying to lie. But I tend to dial back. And then people think I'm dialing up. Oh, 70 million phones. I mean, come on. You know, 700 million devices. Phones, you name it. Now, Again, I've had whistleblowers on 20 years ago from the NSA, James Bamford, uh, you name it, telling us all this. They've been doing it that long. Look, I'm not out to get Chinese people because they're Asian. My sister's Korean adopted. I love her to death. China feeds on its own people. The point is, is when Trump says we're being screwed by China, man, we're being screwed. And they tried to have this fake nationalism against Russia. Russia's not doing this. Russia can barely keep from collapsing. Because they've been under globalist sanctions. The threat is China. So joining us for the rest of the hour is Roger Stone of StoneColdTruth.com. Every Wednesday, he's going to host the fourth hour here. Paul Watson hosts Thursdays. The rest of the crew uh, hosts other hours. I, I, I do intend uh, in, in the near future, as soon as we get another line of crew hired, uh, because we got one crew working seven days a week right now, uh, we're going to add more broadcast here to the InfoWars operation. And more than happy to work with the folks at GCN as well. Uh, but uh, we are more and more doing things on our own, syndicating the broadcast, sitting out on satellite ourselves, uh, just because it's better to do it you know, here out of the Hacienda uh, in Austin, Texas. But I got to tell you, I'm an eternal pessimist because I don't want to get arrogant and think I'm winning uh, and then have a problem. Um, I shot a big elk a few weeks ago and looked like he was down. And I went over there, some great steaks, the crew's been eating it. And I got over there 20 minutes later, and he got up. And it was pretty dangerous, and I had to pull out my uh, Smith & Wesson 500 handgun that I had on my side and take him, take him down. But, again, you don't want to be too confident. We don't want to say, as the wolf says in Pulp Fiction, that all is well. Uh, we can all you know, service each other at this point. We're winning, but I, I didn't celebrate enough eight, eight nine, ten days ago. I, I will tell you, Sessions is a great choice to the attorney generalship. Ford returning 62 days before Trump even gets in because Trump called the heir to the Ford dynasty and said, look, stop being anti-American. I'm going to tax the hell out of you. Don't do it. He capitulated. It's the president, folks. He's got power. The globals want to sell that power out. We've still got it. We can still get a reprieve. Apple says they're probably going to come back. Um, just a lot of really positive things. A lot of good things are happening. And then we got the numbers for InfoWars today. They put us in this database put out by some... Ford Foundation, Southern Poverty Law Center connected uh, professor woman, who I guess is God. And they delist at InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, Breitbart.com, Project Veritas, everybody, saying we were fake. And then the, uh, Google was putting up messages saying, don't go to these sites, they're dangerous. We're going to Roger Stone here in about 10 seconds. And I love where he says he's in a parking garage. I, I guess, you, like, like leaking to deep throat, like Drudge says, only safe spot to talk is in a parking garage these days with the Chinese 700 million devices being tracked by him. And, I told people 20 years ago they can dial into your phone and listen to you. Now it's all admitted. See, folks, another thing, we've been caught in fake news. But they had to back off today when they finally relisted, who knows how high it went, Infowars.com today. It was 126 on the web. Drudge is like 100. Uh, so when I tell you that we're getting 10, 15, 20 million visitors a day, folks, I'm not kidding. And, and let me expand on that. 80 plus million viewers election week. And I thought it would actually trail off. It is. It hasn't. I mean, it, it's it's not. I mean, I thought it would go down by like sixty percent. It's 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 only going down by like twenty percent. Uh, this is just insane. And and the problem is, I'm just wondering how they're going to strike back. You've got them desperately trying to prop up globalism, meeting with Merkel, Obama, Roger Stone. How big is this win? I mean, you wanted me to celebrate. Uh, you know, last week you said, look, tomorrow we can get back on the parapet. But I've got to tell you, I'm ready to celebrate now. I'm kind of having delayed euphoria here. Well, Alex, uh, I am a, a mem reaching you from a uh, from a parking garage, kind of a homage to a Deep Throat, if you will. Uh, I'm uh, in town to meet with some of the transition people. Look, I'm very, very pleased. Uh, 
excellent news today. Jeff Sessions, a senator who's been on this program, uh, a, an early Trump supporter, uh, a believer uh, particularly in sealing our borders, uh, in the rule of law, the right man at, at justice, in my opinion, the right man to proceed against the Clintons with the grand jury proceeding. Uh, excellent news of General Mike Flynn, uh, who, uh, who thwarted the, uh, the Clintons and went to the, um, uh, to, uh, the Trump side, actively campaigning for Trump, a very effective surrogate for Donald Trump. Now at NSA, you see the beginnings of a team of nationalists, a team of men and women who will put America, not the globalist agenda first. So, so far, so good, Alex. I'm very pleased. Let's keep talking about the situation with Flynn and NSA. Wow. Well, there was an attempt uh, to derail him by some of the globalists. Uh, General Flynn had uh, filed with the Congress to uh, do some uh, lobbying, essentially educational work for a Turkish-American Turkish interest. Um, evidently, he did not file uh, a uh, Foreign Agents Registration Act. It's not clear that he needed to, but he may have needed to. It was an oversight. It was very clearly an honest uh, mistake. I think it's being rectified. In no way should it keep this distinguished man from serving in the Trump cabinet. And Trump wants him for the head of the National Security Agency. That's a big deal. Uh, it's, a, it's an enormous deal because, of course, it coordinates the activities of the, uh, the Central Intelligence Agency, Defense Intelligence, uh, the Pentagon. I mean, this is the job that Henry Kissinger had. This is the, the molder uh, of the president's foreign policy. Uh, and um, look, I, I wanted Flynn for vice president. It was a minor problem, he turned out to be a Democrat. But that said, I, I think he's reflective of the kind of men and women uh, that you are going to get out of a Trump administration. Uh, not men and women who are part of the Washington establishment, not part of the two-party duopoly that has run the country. Yeah, this is a general yeah. who was basically Trump removed. Biden. This is a general who was removed by Obama two and a half years ago because he wouldn't back ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Syria. This is a guy that blew the whistle and exposed the whole thing. That, that's exactly right, Alex. He's shown his medal. This guy stood up to the Clintons, uh, and uh, he's, a, he's an excellent choice. There is discussion now of uh, Governor Jan Brewer going to Interior, uh, former governor of Arizona. She would also be an excellent choice. Again, an early Trump supporter, not a globalist, a nationalist. Um, these are the kind of, uh, of names that I'm hearing, uh, and they're very encouraging. The battle royal, of course, is still Secretary of State. Now, there's no question former Mayor Giuliani has expressed his interest. Former UN uh, representative under Bush, John uh, Bolton, has expressed his interest. Uh, Senator Robert Corker is, I think, ranking on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee has expressed an interest. Yesterday, evidently, the president-elect reached out to uh, Nikki Haley, the governor of South Carolina. Now, I don't know that she has the credentials for Secretary of State, but it tells me that perhaps, perhaps, president-elect is looking for another choice for uh, Secretary of State. Uh, look, I know John Bolton. I like John Bolton. He's a great guy. He's a great guy to play poker with. He's a great guy to, to uh, drink with. He's a great guy to play cards with. Uh, but he's not uh, hes not a non-interventionist, particularly when it comes to Russia. Well, let's he just say it. He's got a hard-on for... He, he's, got a he's, neo -con, he's, got a, he, he's got a neocon hard-on for Russia. Yes. Now, he did, to his credit, unlike many of the other uh, neocons who cut and ran... He supported Trump in the general election, and he uh, and he very actively campaigned for it. Uh, so he has some standing in the camp, uh, but I would really like to see somebody who more accurately reflects reflects the president's views on Russia as well. Sure. As why don't they just send him back to be the one. U.S. ambassador to the U.N. or something? Why promote him to Secretary of State? Well, look, uh, there may be another place for Bolton to serve. He's an able man. 
but you can bring a whore to church. That doesn't mean you should ask her to lead the choir. <laughs> All right, look, I, I've been asking some of the questions here. What else is going on in Trump Landia? He's delivering on so many fronts. Uh, they're just, this seems to be so exciting. And mainstream media's numbers are still declining. Liberty media is exploding. We completely dwarf them now. Uh, this is just, I believe, a total tipping point's been achieved. I'm concerned, though, that they're going to get so panicked that they hit the panic button and, 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 and do something rash. Well, I was uh, I have now been able to confirm something you reported last night, Alex, and that is Chelsea Clinton has reached out to members of the Trump family in a desperate plea not to have her parents uh, prosecuted. Uh, unfortunately, it does not work that way. We are a nation of laws, not a nation of men. Uh, and I think uh, those in the Trump inner circle uh, believe that this is a question that is best left to the grand jury. This is a question that is left not to politics, but to career prosecutors who can examine all the facts. There's a lot of alleged crimes here, 30 years of alleged crimes. As you know, Alex, there's no statute of limitations on treason. So perhaps selling missile targeting technology to the Chinese in return for uh, campaign contributions, perhaps a special prosecutor should should visit that issue and see exactly what happened. Uh, what do you think the pucker factor was this morning when President-elect Trump selected for confirmation, which I'm sure he'll get in the Senate, being Senator Sessions with a great record, what was the pucker factor over at the Clinton Crime Command Center when they learned that Senator Sessions uh, is going to be the new attorney general. I mean, that had to absolutely have the fear of God in those scumbags. Yeah, I would have thought people would have been jumping out of some of the high windows in the building. Look, <laughs> uh, Jeff Sessions is the law and order attorney general that Donald Trump was describing. Uh, this is precisely uh, the man you need. Yeah, I hate to gloat, but I mean, every time I think about it, I'm having uh, my, my, my brain's releasing just endorphins right now, Roger. Is that okay? Well, look, I had I had kind of a secret hope that Sessions might go to defense, uh, but I'm very happy with him uh, as AG. There is some discussion of General Mattis at defense, another uh, military leader who came to Trump's side early, uh, who is tired of the half-hearted efforts uh, in foreign policy uh, of the Obama administration, where you don't really know whether they're in business to help our enemies or, or to thwart our friends. But that seems to be the bottom line. Meanwhile, my friends in Chappaqua tell me that Hillary Clinton is uh, heavily sedated uh, and that they are really uh, huddling with their lawyers. By the way, let me stop you because you said to me privately on election, I don't, I don't know if I can say this. Well, I'm going to say it. You you were the first person to tell me that, that it had been confirmed that Hillary had dressed folks up in Bernie outfits in Chicago to go attack. I later talked to sources in Chicago and they said, no, the cops... High level had told them that over dinner because one of these guys is friends with, with one of the high level uh, police captains. And they were so pissed because they were ordered to just let them beat cops up, you name it. It was just and beat up families. It was just so disgraceful. You were right on that. And, 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 and then you said election night on air, oh, I bet she's sedated. But you said privately, well, the word is she's flipping out. She's sedated. It's now come out from Secret Service, from CNN people that she blew up for hours, had to be sedated. That's why she wasn't out till the next day. And now she comes out uh, on Wednesday and looks like she's dying uh, with, with no makeup on. It looks like she's about to die. So, so you just dropped that bombshell. What's going on? Well, uh, look, I think you and I are absolutely right. We said at the time that her health was not good. We were told it was a conspiracy theory. Still don't believe her health is good. Uh, when you see her without the makeup, when you see her without the careful lighting, she does not look well. Uh, I have confirmed, as you did, that she threw a violent fit when she learned uh, that she was not going to win. She was uh, her usual foul mouth. She attacked self, Podesta, right? And, and Screaming obscenities at Mook and, uh, and Podesta over what could have been the worst presidential campaign in modern political history, given the billion dollars plus that they had to spend dwarfing the lousy 250000 that that uh, Donald Trump spent, he's very proud of the fact that he spent less money and got more votes. Why do you think Uma Abedin's seen like uh, looking even more anorexic, crying in public, totally freaked out? Well, she may be looking for a sympathy factor. Perhaps that's where this is going, that 
people will feel sorry for her and therefore perhaps she won't be prosecuted. But there are crimes at the Clinton Foundation, uh, Alex, that are even as yet unreported. Sure, of course. Uh, but when I look at the work of Charles Ortel, who's one of the uh, most respected guys, retired from Wall Street, a true financial expert, someone who has specialized uh, in this area of nonprofits, the crimes there that have yet to be reported are extraordinary. We're going to come back, final segment with Roger Stone, and get into whatever he wants to talk about. I've been asking the questions here, but wow, what an amazing time to be alive and to see Trump delivering, 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 delivering. All I care about is policy. I don't care if he puts Santa Claus in, you know, Secretary of State. Santa Claus better do what Trump wants and better deliver this Republic back. And so far, I'm seeing del Trump deliver 100%. This is incredible. Five more minutes. Dr. Pachinik is coming up after that. We also are going to be taking your phone calls. And we've got Roger Stone with us. I was talking to him during the break. I said, what's most important? He's going to reiterate that to you right now. I'm not going to belabor this because there's so much to cover. We need your support. Yes, we may be 126 on the web, and we may reach 5 million people on YouTube. A billion views. That, that's an old number, by the way. Uh, but I'm not good at making money. And so for a media operation this big, we should have 10 times the money. I want to be able to get more reporters. I want to take care of the folks I got here that deserve it. I appreciate you. We got great products at InfoWarsStore.com. We've got the new Brain Force uh, now with 20% more uh, 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 capsules uh, in each bottle. Great nootropic. Got a lot of other great products. InfoWarsStore.com. Shop with the good guys. We appreciate you. Support the InfoWar. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Uh, going back to Roger Stone, by the way, both of his books for sale. And the collector, Bill Clinton Rape Shirt, available as well at InfoWarsStore.com. You are getting into the other issues we're looking at, what we're facing, and how we uh, make sure Trump is surrounded by real patriots. Well, Alex, first thing i got to tell you is that everybody in my family now wants a Trump is my president t-shirt for Inauguration Day. So uh, I think they were ordering yesterday. I can see this is going to be a very hot item for uh, both those who are going to the inauguration uh, and uh, those who can't make it. We are exploring having a pro-Trump demonstration uh, to support the president at the inauguration. Let's just say we're going to do it. Uh, I, I, we are out there looking for a location. Uh, I know you're interested. We should have details momentarily. I think it's very important uh, that supporters of the president uh, show a, a show Yeah, we don't just let the communists and all the racists run around and claim that there's no opposition to them and let them hog all the media. Exactly. There's no way we're going to do that. So the difference is our people aren't going to be paid to be there. Our people are going to be there because they're patriots, because they're true believers. The, the Soros crowd, as you know, they'll be there because they're being paid to be there. They're paid agents provocateur, uh, paid agitators. Uh, these, uh, these demonstrations are getting more and more pathetic. Uh, in Fort Lauderdale, they were handing out flyers saying Donald Trump will dissolve gay marriages. No, he won't. That's not what he said with Leslie Stahl uh, on 60 Minutes. It's not what he said in his acceptance speech. That's not what he's ever said. It's the kind of leftist smear uh, that we're looking at. That's right. Uh, what about Steve Bannon? They are really gunning for him. Steve Bannon is a patriot. Uh, he is not an anti-Semite. He is not a bigot. He is not a white supremacist. He, he is he's not even... We're mainstream. They're the radicals. What are they talking about? We are the American mainstream. Yes, he wants to seal our borders. Yes, he believes in the rule of law. Yes, he wants us to have better trade deals with our trading partners. He wants to rebuild our national economy. They hate him because he's effective. They hate him because he sees the big picture and he knows who Trump's real enemies are. So uh, I, I think he's in great shape. I think he's doing a great job. And the mainstream media effort to lynch him has failed. It certainly has. Uh, separately, just the minute we have left, they're going to counter strike. But this, this news of Sessions means that Trump's, I mean, it means Trump's putting in Sessions. That means justice shows that Hillary is, is, is going to get in some big, big trouble now. Uh, wow, this is big. Yeah, no, I think grabbing the reins of justice is an absolute key. Uh, look, we all understand that their game plan, their long-term game, long game plan was censorship. They want to shut 
Infowars.com down. They want to shut StoneColdTruth.com down. They want to shut Breitbart down. They will not ever be allowed to do so. That's right. Their latest fake news thing within 48 hours went down as fake. They're the ones that are fake. We're not. That's why we're exploding. They're dying. Roger, talk to you soon. Thank you, my friend. See you on Monday. You bet. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. And this Sunday, I'll be back 4 to 6 p.m. in studio live with the Sunday transmission. We'll be back with the third hour. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Right, he's popping in for two segments. Dr. Steve Machinic with an update on the intelligence community and everybody that basically turned against Hillary. And he was just one more person telling you that, documenting it, talking to his sources. But this is just a massive awakening across the board to tyranny. And to see Trump now putting Jeff Sessions in as the head attorney general, he's not confirmed yet, but he's got a very good record, been in the Senate. I don't see the Senate not confirming him. This is going to be a big deal. It's going to be a day long remembered. And it's not about settling scores with Hillary. Getting up here on air and going after her, saying put her in prison, putting airplanes in the sky. She's a very vindictive person. But I had to do it. And I would have no power if it wasn't for you. We're all just one contiguous body that loves liberty. And we absolutely kicked our butt. And to see record numbers of black and Hispanic Americans vote for Trump against all the brainwashing and all the stuff that he's a racist just showed that self-preservation and common sense is a lot more effective than pity party brainwashing. They want us to be, it's not even racism we face, it's all this neurotic political correctness, uptight. I mean, I'll just tell you, you get around so-called liberals, they're the most anti-liberal people I've ever been around. Liberal means hospitality and fun and low taxes and freedom and not judging people and stuff like that. That's how I am. Until you try to dominate me and guilt me. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And I've been around modern liberals, man, they are the most obsessed neurotic weirdos. I told the story about a year ago. We're going to go to break and come back with our guest. A couple of years ago, I got invited out to a buddy's lake house and there was a boat dock shared by the community of like, I guess, five, six houses in this little subdivision area. It was a tiny uh, community organization, homeowners association. And I'm sitting there with my son. He's fishing and I'm fishing. We're catching perch and catfish in the morning. And I got a cup of coffee, and, she, and this lady walks over, and she goes, I'm a professor, and, you know, we're going to have some gypsies here next door. You're not a racist. You're not against gypsies, are you? And I said, I said, what, what type of gypsy? Is it a pikey, an Irish gypsy? Is it a Romanoff? She goes, oh, you know all that. Oh, and I was like, well, well, yeah. And I was all running through my data sheet, you know, zzz, you know, I wonder what I'm going to have a lazy eye, a genetic deformity, nothing mean. I'm just like data mining and everything in my own brain. I'm like, well, they're going to be here, blah, blah, blah. You know, just hope you're not, you know, backwards and stuff. There's a lot of racists that don't like gypsies and all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, this guy's connected to Professor at UT and blah, blah, blah. They're really wonderful people. And I said, okay, well, whatever. So I'm there at the community dock fishing. It's a boat dock. And then she goes, is this your son? And I'm sitting there as he's fishing. And I'm going, yeah. She goes, what happened to your eye? Did someone hit you? He has a birthmark on the side of his head. It's kind of sad. As he's gotten older, it's gone away. You know, you, you get attached to things like that. And... He goes, that's my birthmark. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. I didn't mean to say you did anything. <laughs> and she was like a normal looking white lady, 35, but just a basket case. I mean, like a cult leader of just weirdness. And then the gypsies show up. And they were there that weekend. And they were pretty nice folks, except during the day, the waves would get big. And they had like a three-year-old girl half the time without a life jacket, like under the boat dock and stuff. And I'm like, hey, uh, you need to. And I'm like. Googling, you know, they don't take care of their kids, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, you know, the kind of, that's dangerous, you know. And it's just like, it's a culture. It's like the Nazis. I'm going to say the Nazis had a bad culture. I mean, the gypsies, depending on which group you look at, it's about, on average, everybody else is scum but you. And, you know, they, they, some gypsy groups mutilate their kids so they can get money, you know, for their deformities. And it's just, I don't, ex I mean, I was in Rome a year and a half ago, man, and the damn gypsies were robbing people in front of me. They'll come over and take your drink off your table and drink it in front of you. And it's like, it's, it's, it's like liberals have adopted that. They're just pissed at everyone. They're super racist. And they're saying you're racist. And it's like, they're just in your face.
This woman was like, am I abusing my son? She was like literally flipping out because she was so uncomfortable she needed to morally be better than me. It was a form of dominance. Ford got the phone call from Trump, said, I'm going to slap tariffs on your ass. You better stay here. And they said, you know what? We're going to stay here. Apple saying, you know what? China's collapsing. We think we'll move back to the United States. All because we got somebody in there who's not out to get the country. And now Senator Sessions is going to be put in as AG. You know what that signals? Indictments. <laughs> A lot of good stuff happening. And it's not vindictive. I just laugh because... That witch looked like death warmed over two days ago when she finally popped back up whenever subterranean gremlin pit she's in. And it is an exciting time. They're tripling down, though, with race war crap. Uh, the mayor's put out that whites, uh, whiteness, you know, F whiteness, whites are bad. That's the mayor. I mean, this is just an insane asylum level with a white guy, but of German slash uh, Italian ancestry saying that with his weird little psycho controller minions. Uh, the good news is the, quote, minorities know they're the majority, and they want prosperity, too. So it is just incredible what's happening. Meanwhile, they're panicking. The globalism's in trouble. The EU's collapsing. World government's in trouble. But the New York Times comes out and says, I'm insane. Globalism doesn't exist. Talk about gaslighting. we got a former psychological warfare head of the State Department. Maybe he can tell us about gaslighting. and, and or, or, or maybe it's not gaslighting. Maybe they're just mentally ill and still delusional. Dr. Steve Pachenik joins us at the bottom of the hour. Then your phone calls. What do you think of the election? Where all this is going? I'm going to certainly try to kill Trump. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. So, best-selling author, wrote books with Tom Clancy, produced films, involved in all sorts of clandestine activities. Very interesting guy who actually was out there in the, you know, in the fields, in, in the streets, not just as an analyst, uh, breaking down what's happening. Uh, and boy, Hillary tried to steal five states. She did steal five states. She still lost. Uh, but they were confident. They printed up you know, Newsweek that she was Madam President. Uh, I think we've reached the tipping point. We're not out of the woods yet. But maybe I'm wrong. Dr. Steve Pachenik, what do you think of StevePachenik.com? Alex, I want to congratulate you for getting on the front page of the Washington Post. I think that's indicative of the fact that Jeff Bezos and the entire liberal community, which was controlling and controlled, by the Clintons and the corporations is now disintegrating. What's happened is it's really an American revolution in a, in a very unique way. And uh, Roger Stone was correct when he said you were the cutting edge in terms of the words you spoke, the fact that you stood there and, and continuously hammered at the issues that we were concerned about, the false flags, the 9-11, the Sandy Hook, and they praised you by saying you're a conspiracist, you're a truther, and that is the new language of our revolution. In other words, to be called a truther, to be called a conspiracist, means a lot to us. Uh, if we're all truthers and we say that Obama was lying, and Obama created false flags, Obama... Uh, uh, I celebrated the fact that he killed Osama bin Laden when Osama bin Laden has been dead, then what's happened in our revolution is that we're basically stating the truth and we went against the system. The system has now been completely turned upside down. Never in our history have we had a multi-billionaire who's made his own business, never had to go out and ask for help from others other than his own family, has been bankrupt in his companies, which is standard for business in the real estate industry. Let me tell you, it's standard. And at the same time, went around seven times a day, eight times a day on his own play, plane, on his own expense account, and basically mustered the wrath of the American people to get elected into the presidency. I... I, I welcome him. I wish him the best of luck. And I think he's chosen well. Jared Kushner, his quiet advisor, I think is quite brilliant. I think Bannon, uh, as a chief of staff, was a very good choice. And I think the notion that he was anti-Semitic is absolutely absurd. I mean, Bannon... Well, was they don't even say where it comes from. He's not even anti-Israel in any way. They just make this crap up. Well, but Alex, you got to look at, you know, the, the press doesn't even look at the basic history. Uh, Bannon was an executive in uh, investment banking in mergers and acquisition. Now, I've been in that position in another firm, Kidder. But to be in Goldman Sachs and to be anti-Semitic, that's just not possible. 
Then he went into the movie business and became an executive producer and a producer of a lot of films, again in an industry that was predominantly Jewish. Then he works with uh, Jared Kushner and Ivana Trump, Ivanka Trump, who basically are Orthodox Jews. So the notion that he is both an anti-Semite, a racist, and it's just absolute nonsense. So what you see basically is the propaganda machine from the left or wherever the paper's coming from has never done due diligence. They never did due diligence. They just you. spew crap. I mean, what they do is it's like when I said a Jewish mafia doesn't run things. I don't believe that. But the Emanuels are a mafia, just like there's Italian mafia. Then they turn that into anti-Semitism. In your view, let me ask you this. What do you think of the Emanuels? I mean, I mean, look at what they've done in Chicago. One of them, and he happens to be my agent. He's not a very effective agent. He took over the William Morris agency with which I've worked with for 30 years. He's arrogant, self-serving, uh, totally, you know, I, I think he's a bore. I mean, I'm no longer with that agency, but... Sure, that's my point, is I was saying they're not running anything. I was saying specifically, I mean, though, they act like gangsters. I to say that somebody who served in the IDF and has not served in the United States Army happens to be of dual loyalty. And I've said before, I do not approve of American Jews having two passports. You either have one American passport or one Israeli passport. You cannot have two. If you have an Israeli passport, then go to Israel, serve Israel, but don't come and use our country. Bibi had two passports. He took advantage of the education we gave him here all the way through MIT. Then he came back and had the insolence to insult us, to demand things from us. Israel has no right to demand anything from us. It may be our ally, but it's not our best ally. There are many other countries who've been close to us. Israel has been a little child who has to be spanked repeatedly and has to grow up. Well, so I didn't mean to go off on all Israel, Jack. I'm just saying they spew this racism crap when, 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 when it's, it's not even there. And I think it doesn't work anymore. What do you expect them to strike back with? Because they seem to have only increased their lies. They, they don't seem to have learned from this. Do you think that's an accurate statement? That's correct. I think what's happening is in a revolution, when you stop doing the same thing again and again, as Einstein would say, and it's not effective, it becomes stupid. One of the things that I said a long time ago about Hillary was she was not as bright as everybody thought. I don't mean in terms of just being able to spout out policy. She never was able to be creative, initiate anything on her own and think out of the box or strategic. When she did, and the Democrats did, we had Libya, we had Iraq, we had Syria. So what you have is a lack of sophisticated intelligence on the liberal side. What you have is constant palaver of the same type. At this point, they're totally shocked. Everything you said about the liberals, I have encountered in my own area. I couldn't believe that the people wouldn't talk to me. People were afraid. They were scared that they would be raped, pillaged, and this would be a Bolshevik or Stalinist takeover. I said, no, this is a revolution, but it's a revolution that was done very peacefully through the Internet, using many of our own people within the government, and it was done to take out corruption. Now, Trump and his family represented the voice of America and the energy of America. When did we ever have an entrepreneur like Trump who came forth, dedicated his whole life and mission and said, I don't want your salary. I don't want your pension. I don't even want your health care. That's what the citizen warrior is all about. And he is going to appoint people who are along those lines. Jeff Sessions, I don't know him. I have a lot of respect for him. But this is a man who's been in the law, steeped in the law for God, how many? Three, four decades. Forty years. That's exactly right. And he worked all the way up from his own county, Senate, and came to the, the national government. This is not somebody who on a whim came in there. This is not a Loretta Lynch who works at Hogan and Hartson. This is not a James Comey who also worked at Hogan and Hartson. This is a gentleman who represents the South. Then we have Mike, uh, then we have Pence, the vice president, representing Indiana. Then we have uh, uh, Mike uh, Pompeo from uh, Kansas. Are you... Is America beginning to understand that Trump understands what our country's about? Well, let's it's stop right there. I'm going to skip this break so we have more time. You, you've, you've been saying for five, six years there'll be a de-evolution, that, that Europe will break up, 
You predicted That's the Brexit correct. here, and you predicted that, that, that Trump, notice the South voted for him, understands where America has left. Not bashing the North, it's just been taken over by corruption. We have to grow it back in the South, the Midwest, then bring the freedom back to the East and West Coast. And, and you've been predicting this would happen. I know the intelligence community is looking at this as well, so let's talk about this. Well, for a long time, as we were talking about globalism and the president talked about interrelationships, I was talking about devolution of power because the very structure of interrelationship was asymmetric. And it, it was an example where if you had the EU and the EU had one uh, printing press for, the, for 26 or 30 countries, it would not work. England understood this. England understood that the sterling, the pound, could never be attached to the EU because the euro. Because the EU wasn't determined by France or Germany. It was determined by a bureaucratic Brussels. entity in Brussels, which was totally ineffective, had thousands of... Which has socialist ideology, but is robber baron at the same time. And so, again, we're seeing the global government project fail, aren't we? It totally is failing because England is breaking out, Spain will How break. did you know six years ago, it was about six years ago on the show, that it would fail? I mean, I wanted to believe you then, but I didn't see the evidence. Well, because what I look at is the initial structures of institutions and where they are fragile. And when I began to see, when I was in France, I grew up in France part of my life. When I was in France in the 80s and the Maastricht Agreement was made, I understood very quickly that if you're going to change French francs or German Deutschmarks for the euro, you already failed. Why? Because Germany was so powerful that the Deutschmark was in fact determining the outcome of the entire trade organization in Europe. And I don't think Obama understood this, Bush Jr. never understood it. Our intelligence community could understand part of it, but they couldn't understand the, the, the speed at which we had devolution of power. The same thing in Washington. Even though Trump has come to Washington, he's really staying in his own place. And that makes sense. By the way, yeah. I predicted, he didn't tell me this, I predicted he'd stay at Trump Tower at the time just to That's have a correct. break with the whole system. That's correct. And he has broken with the entire system. When everybody said as if it was a joke that he was twittering. No, he explained it very well. In the 21st century, if you do not use Twitter, you failed. You well, he's not dumb. They're trying to take his best weapon away from him. Well, he has his can't. enemy, Leslie Stahl, in front of him saying, please give up your direct communication with the people. Please, please let us be your intermediary so we can betray you. Well, in a way, Alex, with all due respect, I don't see them as enemies because they're not that strong. They're not that formidable. When they see you, Alex Jones, as an enemy, that's formidable. I mean, what you have done over 14 years makes it formidable. And remember, it was a voice and it was the Internet that you used and created. And you were able to syndicate that show. Oh, I hear you. Well, listen, I don't talk about me all day, but what do you make of 126 on the web now, total site, 5 billion views on YouTube. I mean, do you think they figured out they're getting their ass kicked yet? They don't want to. You got to understand when when it hurts, they don't want to admit it. There's a, there's a dynamic called denial, and it's not a river in Egypt. They want to deny what happened to them. How are you going to? How can you explain if you're Hillary and Bill Clinton or Chelsea? How you spend one billion dollars? That was my next question. She really thought she would win. We confirmed with yes. our sources. She threw fits, attacked people, had to be sedated. That's correct. So, so, so how was she so delusional when she was paying for fake polls, we knew it, to, to still think she would win? Well, when you live in a bubble, and this is what we were talking about for decades, you and I, she lived in a bubble where she never had to do anything on her own, never drove her car, never had to go see a doctor who was a real doctor who could diagnose a Parkinsonism, and she was always protected by the Secret Service. But I want to thank certain members of the Secret Service who revealed to us that she had these diseases. Even if she got into the White House, which I didn't think she would make, she could never remain as president of the United States. It just wouldn't happen. I can't go into the reasons why, but she understood it. Unfortunately, Bill Clinton and the Democrats never understood what I was saying months before and almost a year before there. Do not run. It wasn't an issue of my threatening them. It was a warning to them. You cannot run. You are not viable as an entity. I don't know who was going to run against her at that time, but we knew very well within the system she could not be accepted within our system. Sure, so it shows how disconnected from reality they are, and so is the cloistered corporate press. So what happens to the corporate press? Do they kind of like blow in the wind like a facade, or they fully no, collapse? Alex, what's happening is 
where you're growing with all due respect, they're basically having a cash flow problems. Even the New York Times had a little article three or four days ago, a small article saying how their cash flows have diminished because none of the advertisers are going to go to the New York Times. But so it's kidding. down 97, 90. Listen, how do they make $800 million a year and then we're bigger than them? Literally on, on, on online. Again, it's all delusional, and people finally see the emperor has no clothes. 97.5% reduction in their profits third quarter. They are in free fall. Well, they're basically bankrupt. What you have here is you have an entity which is basically bankrupt, but they don't want to declare the bankruptcy. You have a Mexican drug lord that's been funding them on the cash flows. You don't need reporters anymore. You don't need an editor. All of that is nonsense. What has happened thanks to InfoWars and Breitbart and others and, and what we've done, it was to get a, take away the newspapers, to take away their content and basically realign it with the 21st century. What do I mean by that? The internet and social media was so powerful that you knew how to use it, Breitbart knew how to use it, Bannon knew how to use it, and most importantly, Trump knew how to use it. He was brilliant. He absolutely understood the power of the social media and the Twitter. Now, I studied that in 1973 at MIT when I was taught by DARPA, the Internet and Social Media. You and I have talked about it, where your father was involved in that. But in 1973, before Zuckerberg or Gates came out and self-aggrandized themselves, we were already talking about the impact of the social media on the world. And that was funded by DARPA and the CIA in its heyday. Now, you see 50 years later, Trump literally using it and the, the Democrats had no idea. They didn't even use it at all. And what did they do? They went exactly the old road, the, not the road. Least and they're still going the, the old road. I, I don't understand it. I mean, the because they're ignorant, they were ignorant, self-delusional and arrogant. When you have that tripod and you have that triad, it's a very deadly combination. It's basically self-destructive. You and I have talked about that. You and I have never been self-destructive. We've always fought. We got hit. We weren't always right, but we kept on coming back. Hillary was totally self-delusional, and her, her cult, it was really a cult group. I'd never seen anything like this. It was before. a cult. It was a cult. It wasn't a movement. It wasn't a liberal movement. It wasn't a movement that had creativity. The closest person to that creativity was the person I happened to have heard a year ago in Warner, New Hampshire. That was Bernie Sanders who could articulate exactly what the millennials were concerned about. He articulated a formula that made sense. Trump understood that. I understood that. You understood it. I wrote a blog a year ago saying that the, the normal opponent to Trump would have been Bernie Sanders, not Hillary Clinton. Sure, so what they screwed Trump up by did. doing that and expanding on that. I mean, he was getting 10 to 1, 15 to 1, by the end, 20 to 1 likes and traffic on Facebook and Twitter. That's always for any marketer, and they have these big algorithms, total proof. That's why they were panicking, but at the same time still believing they could win because they were putting out fake polls. But people didn't buy the polls, so they didn't go get on the bandwagon for Hillary. That's where they lost it. Uh, the, the, well, the fake they polls. They lost it because Hillary didn't want to hear anything that she didn't want to hear. Alex, you and I understand that we open up and we listen to different things. Sure. As you just mentioned, when I talked about devolution of power and it was seemed out of style at this five, six years ago, I wasn't blowing smoke in the wind. At this time, we don't have to be self-aggrandizing. We simply say the system has changed. We've gone from paper to the internet. We've gone from numbers to binary. And the old establishment hadn't figured that out yet. No, the intelligence community had. But what happened was she had seconded guys like Michael Hayden and others who were sycophants. We, in turn, went back to our own people at a lower level and said, look, we've got a problem. She had a civilian coup. Now, you have to understand what that really meant for our, my own people, my own people being military intelligence, civilian intelligence, and all across the board. They understood right away when Hillary and Bill had co-opted Comey, Loretta Lynch, the FBI, the CIA. She was setting up something really dangerous. She had to be dealt with. There was no question. And, and the minute that occurred and I got a go ahead, that meant we ran a counter coup, as you know better than anybody else. We ran it through a Julian Assange. And I've got to say, Julian Assange Zero. is the 
honorary citizenship to America. He really has helped. Sure. Us out. How can Trump? You know, I get three years ago say it's a traitor. I get on his face. You know, not, you know, uh, Snowden. How could he not pardon Snowden or give Assange asylum here when these are the guys that got him elected? Snowden is a separate issue. I have to differ with that. Snowden was part of the CIA. He was part of the NSA. Snowden had a top secret clearance and then special access program. It's a very sensitive issue. When you are part of an organization like Daniel Ellsberg and you suddenly become what they call a whistleblower, I'm very, very mistrustful of who you are and who you represent. You think it might be a double or triple Snowden agent? He doesn't just represent who he is. He doesn't represent the you think, you think Trump's right saying go after him? Yeah, I would say yes. But Assange I, is good. I would bring him through a, a process that's civil. He should have a defense lawyer, the best that money can buy, Hogan and Archer or William and Conley. I'm sure there are enough lawyers in the Senate who can recommend that. And he should be tried. And see but as for Assange, he should be given an award. All right, uh, yes. folks, you can find your book, Steve Shinnick Talks, at SteveShinnick.com. Always Alex, interesting. Thank you and your audience, Alex. I, we couldn't have done it without They're them. the ones. It's incredible, and we're still not out of the woods yet. But I tell you, we're in the fight, and that's most of the battle. Thank you, Doc. We'll be back yeah. with your phone calls and more straight ahead. This is the Info War. Stay with us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to your phone calls here in just a second. Um, I've done this myself looking for racism of Stephen Bannon. I don't just go out and defend him. I'm going to try to find stuff I've said. And then they'll always take it out of context and like literally twist it. It's like yesterday I said, I don't know what happened at Sandy Hook. They take me out of context where I say, I could see how it was actors and stage. They have green screen. They've staged so much other stuff. It just doesn't make sense. I guess the whole thing could be fake. People are, I was talking about people criticizing me for saying at least part of it was real. And they've been caught with real events having actors to then try to squeeze as much emotion out of it as they can. I mean, CNN just got caught last week with fake, fake, uh, fake interviews. And they take a complex thought like that where I'm really trying to tell people what I think. You know, you're like looking into your brain saying, how do you describe this? Because it's complex. I don't know. Usually I know. And so I can be definitive. But when I don't know, I'm like, well, I look at it on this side, I look at it on that side. And I feel sorry for the, the parents of the kids. And I know there are school shootings and it's terrible. So... And then the media thinks they've got me. Oh, he backed with that. A New York Daily News article today, a bunch of others. Alex Jones comes in and says he doesn't believe Sandy Hook was staged. And then one minute later, contradicts himself. No, I didn't. I was very clear, just like I just was. The whole official story is very convoluted. A lot of it doesn't add up. And a media that's been caught lying so much is running it. So how do I believe anything? I could have a neighbor that's lied to me 50 times who I know is a criminal. And they come and tell me, uh, oh, hey, come home. Your house is on fire. I'm not going to believe them. Even if the house is on fire is what I'm saying. So then they play these games, you see. They, you know, they play these games. And they can take anything and turn it around. Like, I do not believe a Jewish conspiracy runs the world. But there are a lot of criminals that happen to be Jewish that hide behind anti-Semitism claims like the mayor of Chicago. There's Irish Mafia, there's Italian Mafia, there's Jewish Mafia, there's Dixie Mafia. They're all bad. We don't have one Mafia running the world, but I think the Emanuels and Obama are like a Mafia. Oh my God, Jews run the world, Alex Jones said it, oh my God, and he's Jerusalem Post. And you read these cut-off quotes all cobbled together, it's like, man, there's a reason people don't believe you or listen to you. It's crazy. Rob Jacobs is Jewish, a great friend of mine, the oldest employee at this company. He tells a story growing up in Brooklyn where some of the Hasidic Jews, I found to be great folks, but he said they were, some of them were really obnoxious. And he's Jewish, he's allowed to say this, would come up and say, you need to come to our meeting or you need to do this, you need to be in this business deal. And when he wouldn't agree, they'd go, oh, you don't like Jews. And like sit there and peck at him and, you know, mess with him. And, you know, it's just crazy, folks. I don't like white supremacists. I don't like. Uh, you know, Jewish mafia. I just don't like criminal groups, and every group's got it. Let's let's stop lying about it. I can take you all over the place and find toothless white people that are the dumbest people you can imagine who hate everybody, including their neighbors. All they got is running around going, I don't like the Mexicans, I don't like the N-word. Those people are jackasses. They're jokes. You know, my dad corrected me last week. He said, you know, you're talking about my dad who ran for office as a Republican. And uh, who was loved by the black folks and things, and who stood up to the Klan and had the Klan threaten him. He goes, they weren't that threatening. They were a bunch of goobers and wimps. I mean, he did stand up to them, and they did threaten him. But he goes, you know, it wasn't like it was that scary. And I said, well, of course, you know, your dad was a badass, and 
He had the people behind him, but he, they still did threaten him because I've been threatened over him myself in East Texas. But I mean, that's what I mean. Like my family has literally fought the KKK and I get to sit there and have dumbasses tell me I'm with the KKK with a bunch of pot belly dumbasses who want to run around acting like they're in some cool club. I've been invited to the inauguration and don't even want to go to that. I'm going to be out in the street fighting the demonstrators, exposing them. That's where I am. Anybody figured out yet? I don't want to be in anybody's club. I'm not in anybody's club. I don't care if you're black, white, woman, man. As long as you're cool, I like you. If you're an a-hole, I don't like you. I want to go to your phone calls. It's just, I'm back there and Matt, one of the producers, is going, yeah, look at this article. Even on a BuzzFeed. They admit, here's Bannon over a year ago talking about how we're trying to wash out racism in the in, in the libertarian right-wing movement and how everybody how, how we want to get everybody, including minorities, involved. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why the white supremacists hate me more than Benjamin Netanyahu. A world where he said racism on the far right gets washed out. And yeah, he called Putin a kleptocrat. He doesn't like Putin. It's a diverse group. The point is that I'm not even sitting here saying Stephen Bannon's perfect. They just misrepresent. They say he's an anti-Semite when Breitbart's basically a pro-Israel outfit. This is just horse crap. It's all, and I'm not even here defending it because, oh, you're getting us. Oh, you're on target. Oh, I better defend. It's, you're a joke. InfoWars has never been about race garbage, except for exposing it. If you Google Alex Jones, Jewish agent or whatever, you'll just get, I mean, literally, you go to the Nazi websites, folks, they hate me more than anybody on earth. And you know why? It's because I just want everybody to have freedom and I want to win the culture war where no matter what color you are, you're into free market, the Second Amendment, and freedom. I don't care what color you are. We can ride around in jacked up monster trucks, drinking beer, and shooting fully automatic weapons. I mean, you know, I, I just I just am not a creep, folks. And I get there's an anti-white agenda. God, there is one. But that that's that's what the system sells because racism is 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 successful with dumb people. And there's no shortage of dumb people regardless of skin color. But if you Google and, and just go look at what the white supremacists, and, and you know, I found out the white supremacists are a bunch of feds. They're a bunch of Southern Poverty Law Center people. I'm going to tell you right now, eight times out of 10 from our research, white supremacist leaders work for the big foundations, Ford Foundation, Southern Poverty Law Center. It's not like they've infiltrated these groups so they can control them and, you know, see what they're doing. They create them. They create them. They're gang members, folks. That's all it is. It's gang crap. Like, oh, you got a blue bandana. You got a red bandana. It's all this crap. And I personally am sick of it. You know, I've got a bunch of clips here to play. And I'm going to put a Sandy Hook special out tonight on the nightly news that Rob Dew's been working on. Because they just keep bringing up the Sandy Hook and bringing up a mother, bringing up a sister, bringing up, you know, all this crap. All I know is Anderson Cooper was there and he turned his head. He was in a freaking green screen. And you got caught with other fake reporters interviewing each other supposedly on satellite and it wasn't even on satellite i mean i don't know what was going on there i'm explaining it to you again but it's as phony as a three dollar bill now when i'm decisive and i've got hundreds of polls that were done privately showing trump way ahead and i told you he was going to win it's because i've had the facts the only thing i've got is my credibility and by the way credibility doesn't mean the way I present information. Oh, Alex Jones yells and screams sometimes. absolutely, frickin because I'm real. But when it gets down to information, man, I'm not going to lie to you because of my integrity. My most valued possession is that who I am is right here on my sleeve. In fact, it says AJ right there on my shirt. That's who I am. My integrity is right here. That's all I got right there, folks. You see that? That's all I got. And this world's going to get a lot better when people start living like that. Talk about not having integrity. Look at de Blasio. I mean, I looked at photos of him this morning for like five minutes. He just looks like a sack of crap, the New York mayor. I wouldn't eat dinner with him, but I saw him trying to sell me a car. I wouldn't walk. I'd run off the lot. De Blasio. You look at him with his creepy staff of creepy manipulators that think, ooh, racism's really effective. Yeah, nobody ever thought of that before.
Nobody ever thought to use that before, tribalism. Oh my God, you're just a, you're so smart. You're such a genius. Why don't you try what the West did to try to phase this crap out? No, instead you claim you're the West phasing it out when you're the ones bringing it back with these jackass employees saying F white people. What the hell are you doing in your white bread clothes and your fancy mansions you live in and your big Fifth Avenue palaces sitting there running around with black people on the street trying to turn them into racist? The good news is every black person I know sees right through this crap. How obvious is it some cracker ass sits there with an F whiteness sign? Nobody likes a traitor. What the hell's your problem? And by the way, you're not a traitor because you're saying F whites. You're a traitor because you're a traitor against the species. I mean, the mayor of New York is a disgusting embarrassment. I have figured it's not hatred I have. It's not even disgust. I feel low that you're associated with me as a human. I'm ashamed of you. I really am. I looked at Google Mayor de Blasio and clicked photos of him. The creepy fake smile looks like looks like Jerry Sandusky. I'm sorry. He looks, just looks like him. A big, fat, leering piranha head. I mean, just my very cells go, oh, God, evil, ugh, fake. Just, oh, get away from me. And I'm not saying he's, I mean, look at that guy. Look at that. Look, at, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we have the next contestant for American Psycho. A race-pimping sack of crap. An enemy of everything decent, de Blasio. Just look at him. Out there with his staff saying, F white people. You're an effing white male, dude. What is your freaking problem, dude? I bet money that son of a piece of trash absolutely was born in a porta potty at midnight. And I bet you money that he doesn't give any money to people. And he absolutely hates his constituents. I mean, look at that guy. Look at that. Look how he thinks he's God. He thinks he's invincible. He thinks he's smarter than you. No, you're lower than we are. We won't, we don't think like you, rat head. Race pay, a big White guy shows up saying F white people to black rallies. I mean, what the hell crap is this? What the hell's your problem, man? What the hell? Like if a black guy showed up at some meeting with a thing, F black people. I mean, what the hell's your problem? Get the hell out of here. Don't you think we see you, punk? De Blasio, I see you, man. You changed your name. Everything about you is fake. He thought Wilhelm sounded too white. These are insecure people, folks. I want to go to your phone calls briefly because I haven't plugged anything today hardly. Solutions from Science has amazing solar panel unit systems that are right now discounted at a redonkulous rate. PowerGridChaos.com. Got a bunch of other great products as well, but they want to just plug this. Uh, you know, I've been talking about uh, they're trying to start war with Russia, cyber warfare, and all the threats of the power grid. Solutions from Science has a moving warehouse sale. Here are three reasons you should get one of their perfect power generators. It's the one I have, the top-of-the-line model. It's expandable, has a wind input, and even produces pure sine wave power so you can run medical equipment, even military-grade equipment on it. Go to PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com. Save over 70% while supplies last, powergridchaos.com. We have the new uh, nutraceutical um, in. That's Brain Force Plus with now 20% more, 20% more capsules. And it's a great product. Uh, I, I love it. I, I quite frankly think our bio true selenium is just as amazing. I'm reminding myself to take one of those little babies right now. Uh, but to InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll free, 888 and by the way, we're really good at dominating in media. We're not good at making money. People are like, wow, you got this big organization. Yeah, with billions of YouTube viewers a year and hundreds of millions of radio listeners a year, you'd think, and 126 website in the world, you'd think, no, we're, we're not, I'm not bitching anybody because I'm the one that runs this operation. We're really good at reaching people. We're not good at bringing in the cashola. We don't have any Mexican kingpins, you know, funding us like New York Times. So and we're bigger than the New York Times, if you didn't, didn't hear. That's why they're in a... Oh, my God, you're in the New York Times. Oh, my God, did you read it? No, I didn't read read the article. I thought, I'm like, are you human? Am I a prop for the story? You know, do you understand? I mean, it's, I just, I'm talking to him like, we come to your planet in peace. We do not wish to have war with you. I'm not even like, it's just ridiculous. All this, oh, my God, the New York Times. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I don't care if a shirt's from Target. 
or Neiman Marcus if I like it. I'm not into all this classism crap. I like a boat because I want to be on the water. I like a fast car because I like a fast car. Not so you look at me in a red light. I'm just so sick of all the fake people, man. I can't handle it anymore. I look at de Blasio and I'm like, maybe our species isn't good. Look at this guy. He's got to look like he just, you know, pumped the neighbor's dog or something. I mean, I'm sorry. It's an absolute fraud on humanity, a disgrace, an abomination. They are. They just, I, just, I just can't help it. Uh, Johnny in Kansas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Got it. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you, Johnny. We're not in Kansas anymore, are we? <laughs> I have been there for a long time. Hey, uh, well, there are several initiatives we've got running out here, but I want to point out to everybody that uh, Trump is not a savior. Matter of fact, there ain't no saviors out there. We have to save ourselves. So it takes us to get involved in this thing. Grab, grab the reins up and start leading this horse in the direction you want to go. Okay. I agree. We've all got to reach out, basically adopt brainwashed liberals. I've heard there's a national movement to do that. We should all go out and adopt one of these poor zombies, take them out shooting, feed them barbecue, pat them on the back, let them, you know, it's just all crazy. Absolutely. And there's an initiative, uh, surely you've heard about the uh, greatagain.gov website that uh, Trump has set up. Yeah, let's put that on screen. I love it. Here, go ahead. Imagine, greatagain.gov. It's an awesome uh, outreach to, that'll go all the way down. You know, if, if you can get on your smartphone and get there, of course, it's kind of hard to read and type on that smartphone. Sure. Well, what should we look at on the site? We're on the site right now. Well, uh, we've, we've got an initiative moving forward to try to get Chris Ann Hall to be a constitutional scholar for Trump, some kind of a education for the people in the service in the uh, in the government, and especially the armed forces. You know, our armed forces could use some constitutional uh, civics. But uh, well, I think they're starting to get it now. But I hear you. I appreciate your call. Good to hear from you, Johnny. All right, let's uh, talk to Nick in Connecticut. Yes. Trump did visit a goblin. He didn't kiss a goblin. He didn't get in bed with a goblin. He didn't marry a goblin or have babies with a goblin. But Trump did meet with an actual goblin yesterday. Go ahead. How you doing, Alex? Um, what I wanted to talk about real quick was, uh, you know, I'm real hopeful for, you know, the possibility that we're actually going to be able to take back our republic. But uh, I want to know your take on, first of all, Trump considering Romney for Secretary of State, and second of all, the recent meeting he had at Trump Tower with Kissinger. And I saw my local Fox affiliate that he possibly is being considered as a cabinet member in Trump's administration. Kissinger? Yes. He, uh, there's, I don't there's think that's, uh, that's not happening. Uh, Trump's just patting all these evil people on the head, hoping they just fade off and don't aren't butthurt. So he's giving them face-saving measures. I don't like the Romney idea, but he's better than some. Uh, he's trying to unify things. He's talking about Ted Cruz for some jobs, too, but you notice that didn't happen. Cruz has been asking for a Supreme Court job for over a year from Trump. So, uh, it's, I mean, what, you don't want to come back to you, Nick, and tell us your take on this on the other side. Then Matt, Chris, Justin, and others. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, one of the biggest websites in the world. The enemy hates the site. Keep spreading it. You are winning, folks. You are winning. It's not just that they're saying all the Trump supporters are racist with almost no evidence. It's that they've got all these hyped up people beating up white folks. And then CNN even goes, well, they're white. They deserve it. We played those clips. And then meanwhile, all Trump's trying to deliver is tax cuts and things like that. People are really, really seeing through this right now. And so I just tell the system, keep it up. I mean, you are just so delusional. There's something about wimps that strolled in and took over this free country, that they've taken our restraint as weakness, they've taken our kindness as weakness, and they're about to find out that, well, they are finding out that's not the case. I mean, they death threat me and stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm a freaking maniac. You really think I'm scared? I'm not just saying that. I mean, I really am a maniac. I mean, I'm kind of ashamed of it at some point. I mean, you think I'm, you think I'm playing games here with you people? I've sworn on the altar of God my entire soul against you. I have turned myself completely over to the resistance of you. Do you understand what that means? You're trying to threaten me? <laughs> That's a joke. You're a joke. The truth is, I'll lose my soul and be destroyed if I don't resist you. I know that. My frantic resistance to you is, is my panicked 
psyche realizing how evil you are that I've got to resist you or I'm with you. I'm guilty constantly that I'm not doing enough to fight you, you sacks of filth. It's not because I'm some good person, but it's because I love God. If there's a bright point in the universe, you're the furthest point from it. And I just think you need to know that. Not in a demoralizing way. I just want you to know you mean nothing to me. Those of you that serve this system. You don't talk to our listeners a lot. I talk to the enemy. Because I want the enemy to know that I see you and I know who you are. And you know I see you and that's good. I want to let, uh, let Nick finish on the Kissinger thing. Yeah, yes, I was doing the goblin joke. He met with Kissinger yesterday. Um, he says he'll meet with the, 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 uh, the Shah of Iran. So all I care about is leaving the guns alone, defending the borders, cutting taxes, prosecuting the Clintons, not putting his foot on America's neck. That's what we're pushing. That's what we're promoting. And, and just not caring about political correctness now and all these moral high ground people that want us to go, we're sorry we've been bad. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm racist. And I'm not. In fact, I transcend all you people's pushing the racism line. Nick, go ahead. Um, you know, I'm thinking this is probably just their last-ditch efforts to try, you know, and I know he's not going to sell out, but try to get Trump on board before they go to Plan B, which is unfortunately they're going to try to take him out, and that terrifies me that that's a possibility. That's right, and, and Trump, by the way, something. Trump, by the way, is, is, is really into the spirit of it and is very fatalistic, the word that's been used, but that's improper. He just is committed and he has no fear. He loves it. Right. That's, I mean, that's why he won't move out of Trump Tower. <laughs> I kind of wish he would. <laughs> well, brother, look, Trump's, Trump's, Trump's in another level now. And so he stepped up there. That's what it's all about, brother. And uh, all of us that fight this tyranny are right there with him. So this is biblical. This is biblical. I appreciate your call. Great points there. Yeah, no, the Kissinger thing's got to happen. Um, and that's the guy who represents the Rothschilds and Rockefellers. Justin in Florida, you're on the air. We're going to hold music the last 10 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, how's stuff in Florida there, Justin? Everything good there? Everything nice? A little bit of birdies flapping around? A little bit of nice stuff going on? Yeah, out? actually, weather's, weather's getting cool. It's nice. Uh, so I just want to get right to the point, though. I believe that now we're at a point where everybody knows revolution has begun. We're ready to take action. And um, it's time for a plan on how to do that. And I have a plan to do that. And um, so we need to rally behind our new president and continue this revolution. All right, I'm going to come back to you then in 70 seconds. Dr. Strangelove says in Dr. Strangelove, Mein Führer, I can walk. <laughs> we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. Hour number four. That was a Stanley Kubrick joke. We're not being Nazis. We're making fun of Nazis. For the New York Times, okay? We don't use code words like you do. We'll be right back. Republic Defense Fleet has won decisive battles against the globalists. We've captured the capital, but only have a tenuous beachhead. Would you like to know more? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's. Uh, that kind of ended quickly. I want to hear some more of Starship Troopers. Justin in Florida. So, what do we do? Okay, so basically, you already have the platform to get us started. So we need to go out to multiple cities, multiple states, and form teams in all those states that go out. We can hit gun shows. We can hit uh, Act for America, programs like that that we know are vetted and that actually are on our team and on our side. And get out, hand out flyers, have cameras there, interview people, get their questions, get their concerns. Sure, we should continue sure energizing that. the base for a liberty movement. But I say get outside the box and don't just go where awake Americans are. I think we should adopt... Uh, liberals, I think we should adopt immigrants uh, who are here legally, and 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 like I'm I'm serious. The way to beat this is give people jobs, be their friend, not just because we're being exactly. patronizing, but the globalists are going to turn them into racist nut jobs. So we're going to have to reach yeah. out to people. Yeah, that's it. That's my. That's what it is. Just get out there, whatever it takes to get out on the streets and have people hit. Yeah, the yeah. Look, 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 look. Notice they yeah. they've totally ignored Martin Luther King's plan, and they've gone now to resegregation. They want everybody in little groups. The answer is reach out, everybody come together, get out of comfort zones and really do it. Now, it doesn't mean it's easy, man. I've had, you know, brainwashed idiots. I'm going to call them racist. They just think I'm out to get them because I'm a white guy. Bow up to me since the media did this. But that's the media's fault. That's why I got to make sure the mainstream media basically implodes. <laughs> By the way, I like Tom Hanks as an actor. But after he did all these ads saying Trump's racist, I'm not watching another Tom Hanks movie. And I mean it. I'm not going to see Inferno. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm done. 
even though Clint Eastwood you know, put him in that last movie, it was good. Uh, Sully, I'm just done with Tom Hanks. Hey, Ovar, Tom Hanks, you're an enemy of this country. You're a piece of crap. I'm done with you. That goes for Michael Moore, any of these guys. I'm done. Uh, great point, Justin. All right, Chris in Virginia, you're on the air. Say about what the globalists have done to our country that you could be talking to Ron Paul and Jesse Ventura, and it seems like they don't have no hope about affecting real change in our country. You know, I, he said this failed, that failed, everything else failed. Uh, Ventura was basically saying if everything gets bad, he just moved to Mexico. He'll just go to his crib in Mexico. I was just, what do you think about that? I'll that, be honest you know, with you about like Ron Paul. I'll be honest with you about Ron Paul. He's a purist and, and wants to change ideology. But the problem is you got to mix ideology with the politics because whatever the energy of the time is, you've got to at least touchstone that. Not in a manipulative way, but cover that issue, hijack an issue to get folks in to hear the truth. So Paul is too pure. Ventura, I think, is a little bit butthurt over the fact that he's not in the limelight or whatever. And so just wants to basically, you know, act like he doesn't care. Real revolution's happening with Trump right now. This is the real deal. And then the last thing I said, I was uh, watching uh, Michelle Obama on on the campaign trail, and, and she was doing that rip, that speech about uh, Trump and taught it. I seen fear in her eyes, and and it and it dawned on me that it was like fear from their legacy. It looked like uh, they built up eight years of this classy, this that, that and the other, and then one instant Trump doing just half of what he said he was going to do for the American people. Their whole legacy be gone. Poof. And <laughs> that's right. Oh, oh, imagine. Oh, we're just going to cut your taxes to zero. Forget giving you money and telling you how to live your life. Here's your money. Imagine. And then there'll be a boom. And that exactly it discredits their whole thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. And I, I just I just want to find that real funny. And then I asked my white friends in a small town, I, what do you think about another white person coming up to you, calling you a freaking white male? <laughs> and the look on their face is like, because we live in a small town. It doesn't happen around here that much. But it's like they don't even believe that that's going I've on. I've had it happen to me. <laughs> they're like these weirdo, they're, they're beyond racist. It's like they're just crazy people. And you're just sitting there and they go, you're a freaking white male. You don't have anything to say. And you're like, I didn't think of myself as a white. I don't walk around like, I'm a white male. I'm, I'm a white male. I walk around like thinking, I want to go eat some enchiladas. <laughs> I want to come back. Thank you, Chris. Great points. Matt and Diana, then we'll hand the baton to David Knight. Stay with us. I'm about to punch out, though. He's about to take over. I'm uh, dealing with Sandy Hook. They try to misrepresent what I say because I simply say I question the official story. So they made a big uh, issue out of that. We got more phone calls coming up. But briefly, I just wanted to say this. You know, I said it was 70 million phones and devices that the communist Chinese loaded uh, backdoor devices to steal your passcodes, to rob your bank accounts, uh, you name it. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's 700 million devices. And this is just an illustration. Imagine, and I'm not some Russophile. I've never been to Russia. Just Russia's doing nothing. Imagine, they were saying Russia's hacking us. The communist Chinese had 700 million devices, we now learn, that they put backdoor technology on to control everything. They're merged with the globalists. This is just crazy. But before we go there, I just want to say one thing. We're all excited right now about liberty movement and Trump and what's happening. But listen, this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for God's hand moving. So it is God doing this. The MVP in all this, we can say, is Julian Assange or Matt Drudge or whoever. But it, it really is God at the end of the day. So I just want to say that. I'm so thankful to God. It's such an amazing time to be alive. Uh, David Knight? Absolutely. You know, Alex, that report that I did yesterday about the two cities. You know, we've got New York City where they float a petition saying, get Trump's name off of our apartment building. Meanwhile, you've got another petition being floated in a Russian town. And they want the name of a road that was put in by the communists who are proud of their godless atheism. They named not one, but two roads godless in this small Russian town. And these people are circulating a petition saying they want one of these roads renamed Donald Trump. That tells you two things. It tells you, number one, these people feel they have really dodged the bullet. We've had nothing but Obama and Hillary Clinton saying, uh, let's declare a no-fly zone. Let, let's go to war with the Russians. Uh, this is like uh, the beginning of the Cold War. We had Nikita Khrushchev coming to the UN. Beating a shoe. His, yeah, shoe on the podium saying, we will bury you. I mean, that's what these people were looking at. It was a real threat. And they just dodged that bullet. On the other hand, the people in Russia, as you just pointed out uh, about this victory belonging to God, we have to understand that there's a lot of people in Russia that are moving towards God. 
as you've got people in New York and other <laughs> bastions of the Democrat Party proudly becoming godless atheists, moving the other direction. And so these people are saying, hey, we don't want to be known anymore. And you know why they're so scared? I can feel they can feel God coming back into the world. Yeah. That's As right. we open the door, it's happening. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I mean, it's not mumbo jumbo. Uh, we didn't prescript this. There's no teleprompters. Do you not feel the energy? Like I can feel the battle going back and forth, but lately it just seems like liberty is just exploding. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is amazing, and it's amazing to see that happening. Uh, and, and we see people, you know, choosing up sides. You know, choose who you're going to serve. You're going to serve the gods, godless uh, atheists with their communism, with their socialism. They will never be there for you. Yeah, or are you going to serve the people? who uh, have compassion for others, who've tried to help people. Uh, and that's what we're seeing, not only in America, but we see an awakening, Alex, you're talking about uh, across the entire world. Because and that's why there's been a demonization of America, because for all of our evils, it was truly had a Christian core to it. That's right. That's what the enemy hates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's never been a perfect country. And we don't ever have any perfect people. And you can go in and you can, you can pick at somebody's life and you can find a lot of bad things about anybody. Uh, just, just like earlier this week, where the people were apoplectic at the University of Virginia because somebody there had referenced Thomas Jefferson. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, you can find bad things in Jefferson's life, and you could ignore the massive number he of He tried to things. end slavery yeah. in the first Bill of Rights, and they wouldn't let him. And they said he had slaves. That was people that were on his family that he was had children with. He was trying to end it. He couldn't. Yeah, yeah. The point, uh, how that's how they distort everything. Yeah. He tried to end it. He was born into it. Mm -hmm. He's a hero, not a bad guy. That's right. You have to look at it in the context the time. of what he was and what he tried to do. And he had a long section. You of try being in Virginia yeah. in, say, 1800 trying to end slavery. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. That's not too popular. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, he kind of stuck out there. And and actually he was... But then they inverted, down. the founder of the, uh, of the Democratic Party, you said they later were racist, they, they invert it and make him a racist. Yeah, yeah. He had long sections in the Declaration of Independence uh, talking about slavery. And then he and other Virginia plant, uh, plantation owners, uh, and again, it was a time they lived in. There was some paternalism, but they wanted to free their slaves. But they said, how do we do this? Because if we let them free here, there's, they're going to be picked on by other people. They came up with uh, Liberia, and uh, they repatriated some of them back there. So, I mean, they, they did what they could, uh, but he was focused Lincoln on looked at shipping everybody back. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just throw people yeah. out on the side of the beach? As a matter of fact, you know, you go back and you look at what Lincoln said in the debates with Douglas. He said, I would not free one black slave if I could yeah. put the union back together. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there, there was some really racist truth stuff is, about Truth is, truth is, what they teach is not what went on. Yeah, that's right. You have to go back to the original. The point is, is that it's the West, not so much the U.S., but England that ended slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, they really used And they did it without a war. Yeah. They did it with the first. You had one guy, Wilberforce, who spent his entire life making that his cause. And never lived to see it. Yeah, he stopped the slave trade. And then just before he died, the thing. they stopped the ownership of slaves. And they, and they compensated people for their slaves and did it without a war. And we're living, though, to see globalism. I mean, who would have thought a year ago there'd be a headline on DrudgeReport.com that they're desperately, we put it on screen, desperately trying to save it. They're just plotting their survival now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and, and what Wilberforce did, and, and I talked about how Nigel Farage reminded me of Wilberforce because he hammered this singular issue, and it's something that he's done for decades, and how Wilberforce eventually prevailed, and I know that uh, uh, even though they're pushing back on it uh, in, in the UK on, on Brexit, they, they say they don't have a plan, so forth. It doesn't I know matter, it's the beginning yeah. of the end. Exactly. But, but again, going back to where you started with God, okay, why did William Wilberforce do that? It was because of his Christian conversion. And he was going to become a pastor. And you had uh, uh, Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace, said, no, you're where God wants you to be. Change that. Get rid of, of slavery. Do something there. So that's what he did. We're all called to do for different things. That's what he did. He made it his lifelong calling. And it was inspired by his Christian principles. And that's what even people like Stephen Molyneux, who's not a Christian, he said, look. Let me ask you this question. And I'm going to get out of here because I know you got to cover stuff and take calls. There's a yeah. big special coming up. I'm not demonizing the mainline church, but World Council of Churches... National Council of Rockefellers, 1900, you know, set it up. The church is all, it's the end of the world. Don't fight evil. Just go to the church, give us money. Big mega church, save souls. If you're not fighting evil, your soul's not saved. Whether whether the end of the world's next week or a thousand years from now, we have to oppose this evil now. And so I, I'll tell you, I just go off my gut and, and also intellectual analysis. I get in mega churches, I feel so empty. I don't feel panicked anywhere. But in mainline churches, now little bitty community churches, little Christian churches, I feel great. Little Bible studies I go to, I feel great. In big churches, I feel sick. I Because the office of a preacher 
keeping people down, not letting them know their real mission, I think is the most satanic position there is. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've been there, and, I, and I've actually dealt with some of with, 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 with mega churches. They are an instrument of pure evil. We have to look at the entire structure and get something that is more like the early home churches that they had before uh, Constantine took that over, where you have uh, people who are engaged, who are involved, instead of sitting there passively and watching somebody do something at the front. You know, that, that's what happened uh, at that point. And, that's theater. And that's what's really happened. Exactly. It becomes something that you watch as opposed to something that you participate in, that you are part of, that you have some responsibility. And that's the difference, folks. You're in the info war. You're taking action out there. That's why this is not theater. This is yeah. real. And I think when you look at what's coming up, Alex, Donald Trump is still going to have these big, massive rallies. He's going to go around. We need to understand that everybody is truly, you know, as Buckminster Fully said, hey, we're all crew on the planet Earth. We're all crew on this movement of liberty. And if we go back to sleep and say Donald Trump is president so he can do everything, uh, we're going to lose. Just like what you're talking about, the mainline churches. You get one guy. He may be a great guy. He may be a great pastor, a great teacher. But if he's the only one doing anything, nothing is going to happen. And if we got a president and you just sit back and don't do anything, uh, we're not going to get anything changed. Well, Trump, that's what he said to me You know, when I talked to him last week. He said, just keep it up, Alex. I need you. I appreciate you and your audience. I said, well, thank you, sir. And he goes, no, I, I mean it. You tell them thank you. I know they're the heart of what's happening and, and, and the spirit of this. Yeah. Every time I talk to Trump, it's about the spirit. Mm -hmm. He's pretty heavy. Yeah. I mean, on TV, he's not fake, but that's kind of him being limited Trump in person. It's like, it's really piercing. Uh, and uh, that's what scares them, folks. Yeah. They know Trump is not out to get you. Oh, yeah. And I keep saying that. Trump, not out to get you. He loves beating big corporations. He loves it. He can't wait. To cut poor people's taxes to zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and look at what we've seen in the since he's been elected in the week and a half or so since he's been elected. Ford's already staying. Yeah. We see all these positive changes that have happened. And we see the drumbeat of the mainstream media coming back. Well, you're not really going to do what you said you're going to do about the borders or about the trade deals or about uh, peace with, uh, you know, going after Russia and peace, uh, uh, not going after Russia, but going after ISIS, uh, partnering with them. And you're, you're not going to do all that stuff that you said you're going to do. By the way, notice the Russians, Russians went yeah. from being threatened with war Two weeks ago, they kept bombing ISIS, and now they've got strategic bombers bombing ISIS. Mm -hmm. We're not for war, but ISIS is bad. Our government put them in charge. We now have a moral responsibility to let the Russians take them out. That's right. And when I look at people who, uh, just before the election, NPR went into North Carolina, where I lived. And so it got my attention. I was, I was flipping through the channels, and I heard the places where I lived. And they talked to these Christians who said, well, normally we vote the for Republicans because, uh, you know, we, we're concerned about abortion. But my husband is a lawyer for foreign companies establishing uh, copyrights here in this country. So we're kind of looking at Hillary Clinton because we don't like uh, what Donald Trump is doing. Exactly, with the TPP. But yeah, so exactly. They won the TPP. So they're looking at a way to rationalize it. And they said, well, I think being pro-life means that you help these refugees. And I just was screaming at the radio, who created the refugees? Who well, that was some change boy, agent. Okay. That's all. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, briefly, we're going to skip this break. Go to your phone calls. I'm going to punch you out here and go to some meetings. We have a Lost Leader special at InfoWars 995. Trump is my president shirt. It's about to sell out. InfoWars.com. Legalized freedom on the back. All new brain force, 20% more in each bottle. And a new, even stronger formulation. Uh, not just not just more pills, but actually a stronger formulation. Brain force Plus is now here. I'm really good. I mean, I'll give myself credit. It's actually like staggering. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's, it's bizarre. It's like, is this a simulation? We're like leading the fight against the New World Order, all this. <laughs> but but we do need the funding, and I'm not good at raising money. For a media organization this big, we should have 10 times the money coming in. We don't. So I'm just asking you, please support us. Uh, support our sponsors, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, for the, su the supplements, or simply call toll-free 888-253-3139. And just briefly, Solutions from Science has an amazing solar generator. I've been talking about uh, all the wars we're trying to start and what's happening in the cyber warfare. Solutions from Science is having a moving warehouse sale. Here are three reasons you should get one of their perfect power solar generator systems. It's the same one I have, top of the line model in my home. I've actually bought two of them over the years. Can't believe they can sell them as cheap. I guess it's miniaturization and cost goes down. Uh, it's expandable, has a wind input, and even produces pure sine wave power so you can run medical equipment or even military grade electronics. Go to powergridchaos.com. That's powergridchaos.com. Powergridchaos.com. Save 70% off all supplies last. Power Grid Chaos. Dot com And look, I want to pay our crew because it takes stress off them to pay them more so they can take care of their families and what they're doing. I want to be able to hire more people. 
I literally don't want a bigger house. I don't want a fancier car. Um, I, 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 everything is about a war with these people, and I really want to beat them. And you can see what Infowars has done. Now, 126 on the web of all websites, bigger than the New York Times online, bigger than the BBC, and now BBC's all digital. We're, we're, I mean, you know, we are devastating them. And so all I'm asking you to do is support us and pray for us and spread the word. Even if you can't purchase products, spread the videos, spread the articles. It's having a giant effect. And I just ask myself, if we've already gone out of billions of websites, 126, where could we go, David, with Providence? Well, it's amazing, and, and, the tr and the time that I've been here, the four years I've been here, just to see one metric that I can easily look at, and that's the number of people uh, that we have following you on the uh, YouTube channel, how that has skyrocketed. It's about six times what it was when I started here. It's amazing to see how that is continuing. One to channel, one, one a metric. billion, 100 million viewers. But, if you, yeah. uh, but I, I mean, look, three years ago they came to me and they said, I haven't got the numbers then because the vice president changed. I'm not bragging, but listeners should know this. We, we got a call and they go, the vice president of YouTube wants to talk to you. We check him out. He's like one of the you know top twenty people at YouTube or Google, and he goes, "Yeah, you have five billion views. We're going to send you out to sign non disclosures. I can't get into all of it. The point is, they let me into the real Google stuff, and 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 and, and some folks even flew to town. And we looked at it. And they wanted me, and they go, "Listen, everybody will be kicked off though if they don't agree to it. You're going to monetize all this, and it'd be a lot of money because you know we were all over." And I said, "Well, I want to keep spreading it, and some people will refuse to go under this. I don't want to just say my stuff's free to everybody and then suddenly claim copyright." I said, "I can't do that." And they said. Okay, well, just at least do your channel, which is why they kind of left us alone more on copyright stuff because it was all BS before. Mm -hmm. But it was $5 billion two and a half years ago. They had a whole map showing it like in a computer algorithm yeah. in a 360 deal. The stuff they've got is incredible. So $5 billion two and a half years ago. $5 billion videos watched. And so, so I mean, like, imagine. I see that. So, you know, what, what I see is the tip of the iceberg and the metrics that I see. I don't. I uh, typically see these metrics on websites, and even when I look at something that I can follow, like YouTube, it's not a full metric. Well, hey, it ain't chopped liver over a billion views on our oh, main yeah. channel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Paul Watson's got 300 million views, and you had, it all, you had just our channels together. It's 2 billion views. But, but, the, but the, the, imagine, imagine if two years ago, two and a half years ago, we were 5 billion. What is it now? See, we don't get all that, mm -hmm. that supervision of, of Google and all that. But notice, Facebook now... Zuckerberg, and I'm not crediting him, it's just true. He came out and said, look, we're not just going to ban fake news. It's not that simple. Because he realizes most of his traffic is the Patriots. It's like, we've if you so dominate where you're the entire organic system, they can't cut you out because you are the system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to cut their nose off to spite their face. And that's what they're doing with Twitter when they do this uh, censorship. And we see James Wood saying, well, that's it, then I'm gone. And so he, he basically just uh, pulled out and said he's boycotting. All right, I'm going to hand this over to you. we got this big Sandy Hook piece coming up, calls, everything else. David Knight, uh, are you glad you moved down here from North Carolina three years or four years ago? It's been amazing. I really wanted to make a difference, and I think this election cycle, I feel like we really have made a difference for sure. And it's look, selling your house and businesses, you're a successful guy, was a hassle. And a few years into it, you're kind of like, yeah, but it didn't all pay off? Yes, yes. And not in money. I mean, it paid off, and look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what, Alex? I worked for the longest time, you know, trying to make things happen in North Carolina with the Libertarian Party. Or it's like, this just isn't working. It's not, it's not happening. So I quit with that. This is where it's happening. You made a bigger difference, one individual getting out there and educating people. Because that's what the Libertarian Party has been doing. Most They don't really want to be politicians. They don't want to control other people's lives. But they want people to wake up. They want people to take responsibility for themselves. But you were able to do that in this platform. And really have a major effect, especially in this election, but over the last 20 years. Uh, even before this election, you had a major, major effect. But I, mean, I keep explaining. I'm just genuine. I mean, I really believe what I'm saying. People connect to that, but it's the viewers. I'm just a little focal point yeah. that happened to actually pop up. Mm -hmm. It's a mirror of all them. It's like the sun. I'm, I'm a mirror. They're the sun. They're the power. It's like, I could, you know, they, they're the ones mm -hmm. of every race, color, and creed. It's very humbling. You know, it's very humbling to have all these glowing, wonderful people. They could be Hispanic, black, white, doesn't matter. They all have this glow in their eyes. They're alive. They're good people. It's like, I get tears in my eyes. Last night, I took family out to a steakhouse, and this family came over. They had a Down syndrome daughter and their son and everything, and they were just, they were so proud of me, and I was, and I was so humbled by the life in their eyes, the humanity. I was like, I'll die for these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we uh, we started talking about it uh, in religious per uh, uh, perspective, and I've had 
missionaries who would who would go to uh, difficult countries and they would say um, I'm going to go there because God's working there. I can see things happening there. So you just go where God's working and and you know, That's it. things is that God is yeah. now working in America. Yeah. That's right. It's a big deal. Yeah. Appreciate really it, David. Good. Thank you, Alex. Well, you know when we look at what's happening with these picks, I am I'm really happy with this uh uh pick of uh Flynn also with Sessions. I'm concerned about Bolton. And I would I'd like to throw something out to uh, Donald Trump if he's uh, listening or anybody uh, is paying attention as we look at this. You know, he's uh, put in uh, Flynn as a um, in an intelligence position. How about William Binney or Thomas Drake or somebody like that to replace Lion James Clapper? Because <laughs> okay, he's leaving. Uh, James Clapper is leaving. We've got to have somebody who is DNI. Remember that the DNI where James Clapper is. That's the guy who's head over the NSA, over the CIA, over all the military divisions of intelligence, homeland security. 16 organizations the DNI is head over. Remember, James Clapper was the guy that was asked just before the Snowden leaks. He was asked by Senator Ron Wyden. He said, are you listening to Americans? You know, because we had this big thing back in the 1970s, the Church Commission. We had the Pike Commission. Uh, they told people that... The NSA and the FBI, the CIA were illegally monitoring Americans instead of foreign intelligence services. And so they had this thing called the FISA, the FISA Act, okay, that was supposed to keep that under control. And instead, what they did was they used that as a tool, as a technique. They inverted it, they perverted it, and they used it as a way to get a search warrant on Mr. and Mrs. Verizon, as Rand Paul pointed out. Okay, so we've had this situation, uh, and it began with James Clapper. He, he started in his intelligence service as that thing was starting, and now he's coming out where they have first been shut down by the exposure of illegal activity. Then they took it over, and they made it a tool, and that's what he's leaving us with. This guy who lied to the face of Senator Wyden, and you could see when he asked him that question, he kind of looks down. I mean, you talk about obvious body language, okay? You don't have to be uh, a uh, a mentalist to uh, to take a look at that, read that body language and know what he was saying. Everybody knew he was lying. He goes, we knew they were listening, but you could just watch him as he was lying. And then it was just a couple of months later that we got the documents from Ed Snowden. And so I think it's very important. I think it would be great to have somebody that has in the integrity of William Binney, who has the love of the Constitution and the rule of law. See, that's what we're seeing with Jeff Sessions. We're replacing somebody like Loretta Lynch, who had absolute contempt for the legal system, who had absolute contempt for the idea that there would be a, a standard of justice for everyone. No, Loretta Lynch and James Comey think there should be one standard for the people at top who are friends with them and a different standard for the rest of you. Remember, James Comey said she committed all these felonies, but don't you try this at home. No, we need to have somebody like Jeff Sessions, I think, who is going to be an honest person. Amazing turnaround to see Jeff Sessions there. But let's also uh, take a look at uh, some of these people that whose names are being floated out there. Uh, Secretary of State, Romney, John Bolton. Seriously? I mean, is John Bolton's name being floated out there by people who like John Bolton? Remember, Roger Stone said... Uh, you can take with a grain of salt a lot of these names that are going to be thrown out there because it's going to be people who are promoting this individual, that individual who gets uh, people to promote him that way. Uh, maybe that's the case. Hopefully that's the case with John Bolton. And maybe uh, as as bad as Mitt Romney is, maybe what they're trying to do is make him look better if, if uh, Trump is going to do a political appointment. I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't do a political appointment like uh, Obama put in Hillary Clinton or John Kerry as Secretary of State. Now, it would be great if we had somebody who was competent instead of just a political appointee. And I want, when we come back, we're going to play Alex Jones's uh, reply to a daughter of Sandy Hook, one of the Sandy Hook victims, who says that uh, Trump must disavow Alex Jones. Alex Jones will have his reply right after the break. Stay with us. You're going to want to hear this. This message is not for the fake news media, the corporate news media that got caught lying to us with hundreds of fake polls during the election, lying about Hillary being invincible. The same folks that got caught doing fake uh, news broadcasts, the same people that got caught with fake guests and interviewing their own reporters, the same people that got caught giving Hillary the debate questions beforehand repeatedly. This is not a message for them. They're always going to lie. It's what they do. They're paid to do it. It's why they have almost no audience. But I do want to reach out to the victims uh, of criminal crime out there, whether it be a baseball bat, a car, a gun, a knife. 
I want to reach out to my listeners as well and just clarify where I stand on the reported tragedy at Sandy Hook uh, that took place at that elementary school. For the last three or four years, it's been mainstream media's number one attack against me to say that I said that there was never anyone that actually died there. I've hosted debates between both sides, and I've been criticized by both sides. People that say that no one died there, and people that say that the official story is exactly as we've been told. And I've always said that I'm not sure about what really happened, but there's a lot of anomalies, and there has been a cover-up of whatever did happen there. There's a few clips Hillary used in her campaign of me out of context saying, I can see how people that look at all this evidence say no kids died there, uh, this whole thing's a giant hoax, but at the same time, there is some evidence people died there. They take that out of context and misrepresent it. That's why they're the deceptive corporate media. But for those that do have an attention span for, say, 10 minutes or so, I will present to you the questions. And I'm going to be quite frank. I don't know what really happened. I know there are real mass shootings. I know people lose children. I'm a father. It hurts my heart. So I don't know what the truth is. All I know is the official story of Sandy Hook has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. There has been a, uh, a shooting incident of some nature at uh, Sandy Hook Elementary School. Federal agents say they recovered two high-powered pistols from the scene and a semi-automatic rifle called a Bushmaster. They say now that uh, there were actually four handguns uh, recovered inside the school, not just two, as we were initially told. Uh, all the ones that I know of at this point were caused by the, uh, the, long, the long weapon. So the, the rifle was the primary weapon? Yes. It's believed at this hour, and it's been confirmed to ABC News by state police there in Connecticut, that two shooters were initially believed involved in the mass shooting. One of those shooters, now dead. They did walk a guy out of the woods. I saw him walk a guy out earlier yeah. with handcuffs. He walked by us and said he didn't do it. It was a grown man. A grown man, yeah. He's sitting in the front of the police car over there now. How was he dressed? Uh, camo pants with a dark jacket. Well, they have, they have an individual in custody who they're talking to, and I am told they are looking at this person as possibly a second shooter. Now that changes the dynamic here a little bit. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. <laughs> I mean, he, he's a worse actor than Glenn Beck with Glenn Beck's fake crime. Okay? I mean, this is disgusting. Okay. My name's Robbie Parker. One thing that's uh, becoming somewhat of a concern, and that is misinformation that's being posted on social media sites. These issues are crimes. They will be investigated statewide and federally, and prosecution will take place when people perpetrating this information are identified. Board members, these are your children, and you would let paramedics and EMTs into the building? You got 27 children declared dead within eight minutes? Who does this? Who is so great at that job? I don't know if they staged this one, but the same familiar telltale signs are now coming out. Now to be clear, corporate media wants to misrepresent what I've said, so this is not for them. But I'm gonna do my best to lay out my questions here. I've got more than 20 news articles and video clips to go over. Number one, the day before this tragic event happened, an email was sent out by Bloomberg's anti-gun group saying, prepare for a big event. But the biggest piece of evidence, the smoking gun, if you would, of a cover-up of whatever really happened is the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive. We see Sandy Hook's Newtown website, K-12, through having zero traffic, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then all of a sudden, it just explodes. It's impossible to have zero traffic to a K through 12 entire school system. And the word is that school system was shut down for those years. That's what the records show. But they tell us it was open. <laughs> I don't know if the moon landings were faked. 
But I don't put anything past these anti-gunners. And early on that day, we watched footage of kids going in circles in and out of the building. You'd be running them away from the building. Emergency helicopters weren't called. Instead, porta potties were prepared for the press within hours of the event. I saw the helicopters that did respond, the police helicopters, saying that there were men or a man in the woods in camouflage. The media later said that was a conspiracy theory. So early on, I'm like, well, I saw local news of the guy in the woods, and they took him in custody. Now they're saying it never happened. So that shows there's some of a cover-up happening. And then I saw Anderson Cooper. I've been in TV for 20-something years. I know a blue screen or a green screen. Turn, and his nose disappear. Then I saw clearly that they were using footage on the green screen looped because it would show flowers and other things during other broadcasts that were moving and then basically cutting to the same piece of footage. Then I saw CNN do faked satellite interviews with reporters clearly with the same traffic and the same cars right behind them conducting the interview face to face. Then we see footage of one of the reported fathers of the victims, Robbie Parker, doing classic acting training where he's laughing and joking and they say, hey, we're live. And he goes, oh, <laughs> and maybe that's real. I'm sure it is. And they're getting ready to make, uh, to come to the microphone for, for a listener. Okay. My name's Robbie Parker. My family is one of the families that lost a child yesterday in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shootings here in Connecticut. But you add it to all the other things that were happening and all the other fake news the media has been caught in and CNN back in 1991 openly faking Scud missile attacks on Saudi Arabia and Israel when they were back in Atlanta and the satellite feeds caught them admitting that it was all fake. We'd be crazy not to question this because bare minimum, they were faking some of the shots and some of the coverage. Specific given these restrictions, but uh, within those parameters, what did you see? Well, what I saw, I, I didn't see anything hit. I looked very, almost straight above us. There is a vapor trail coming from my right to my left, and there's a cloud of uh, something. It looks like it might have been an explosion, a cloud, uh, a white say. <laughs> So to be clear, we point out clear chroma key, also known as blue screen or green screen, being used, and we're demonized. We point out they're clearly doing fake interviews. We point out that normal emergency procedures weren't followed. And their answer is to say that we said nobody died. And ladies and gentlemen, the questions I ask are not offensive to any parent who lost a child that day. They're not offensive to the Connecticut State Police. They're not offensive to anyone. They're such simple questions. Why no trauma helicopters? Why would you not let paramedics, board members, these are your children, and you wouldn't let paramedics and EMTs into the building? You got 27 children declared dead within eight minutes? Who does this? Who is so great at that job? Columbine happened in the 1990s when there were less surveillance cameras, and we got play by play, blow by blow. We got the surveillance footage all released. They sealed the surveillance footage. They sealed the death certificates. They sealed everything in Connecticut like it was more secret than the Manhattan Project. This has never been done in any other case. Look at the headlines. Privacy versus transparency. Connecticut bans access to many homicide records post Newtown. School shooting expert threatened over Sandy Hook investigation. Feds came to his house, you name it, said you better drop it. Newtown destroys suspected Sandy Hook shooter's home. Turns out he got the gun illegally from his mother and didn't buy it illegally in the open market. But the media still lies and says he did and filed a lawsuit against Bushmaster. Then we have the bank burning down Adam Lanza's home so no one could buy it and investigate it. They didn't just burn down Adam Lanza's home to get rid of it. They didn't just seal all the records. No, 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 when they demolished the school, 
They made everybody that was part of it sign non-disclosures. And then this Agatha Christie whodunit gets even weirder. Rob Dew's uncle, respected FBI agent that runs his own big security firm, John Dew, Rob Dew's uncle, is at the foyer meeting that our reporter's at and tells our reporter he's never seen anything like this before concerning the cover-up. All these bureaucracies have paper trails. And it just doesn't add up. And that's what my uncle said. So, yeah, tell us everything he, he said. He, so I, I said, what did you think? He said, well, I've never sat in a court proceeding like this ever in my life. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, he goes, here's, you got this small town, the biggest event in their history by far. And nobody knows nothing. Nobody remembers anything. And there's no paperwork for anything. No goes, paperwork. I just don't understand how this is going on in this small town. And I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, he goes, even, he goes, even when we were, you know, going after the mob, he goes, he said Gotti. they would remember, well, Gotti, he didn't say Gotti, but I remember back in the day, my dad talked, he was, you know, working on. So the it was case. Gotti. Yeah. Well, one of the guys, it was, there was a lot of different mobsters they were going after back in the eighties and and nineties. Uh, I guess he, he retired sometime in the nineties. Um, but he said, you know, we never had a, a case where nobody knew nothing. You know, <laughs> he said, I just couldn't understand it. How in this small town, nobody knows anything. The school board guy doesn't know anything. The maintenance guy doesn't know anything. Uh, the head select woman doesn't know anything. Stuff is being delivered, and nobody knows how it got there. So this town's mascot is Sergeant Schultz. Essentially, yeah. You know, you learn a lot over the years running a major media operation like InfoWars. And one thing I've discovered is that when MSM attacks you on something, a lot of times it's because it's your strongest information. And they want to discourage you from covering it. They want to make you think that you're discredited because you're talking about it. It's kind of like saying, oh, you're all discredited because you're for Trump. He's going to lose by 20 points. Everybody knows he's a loser, even though internal polls showed him losing. And it's the same thing with this Sandy Hook. I've moved on from this story, but they're always attacking, saying I'm going after family members of victims. This is a tragedy. I wish it never would have happened. But quite frankly, I wish that the official story was true because that's a lot less scary than them staging something like this. But when you think about how they stage WMDs to kill over a million Iraqis, when you think about all the other hoaxes, all the other lies, all the other rigging, and the way they're freaking out about it and trying to cover up every level of it, it just makes me ask what really happened there? Because I've hosted debates, as I said, and said that I don't know what really happened. When I sit there and read quotes of other people saying they believe it's staged, the media knows full well they take that out of context and have me definitively saying it when I've always said, I don't know what happened there, but it needs to be looked into. And why should anybody fear an investigation if they have nothing to hide? In fact, isn't that in Shakespeare's Hamlet? Me thinks you protest too much. So here is my statement for the media when they call up saying, where do you stand on this? Where I've always stood. When there were other mass shootings, I would simply point out that they're very rare statistically and why should we all give up our rights? Because some other bad person does something. A guy with a car runs over 50 people. Do we ban driving cars? It's the same thing. And there have been other instances of shootings that are very suspicious. Aurora is one. Just look into that. But this particular case, they are so scared of investigation. So everything they do basically ends up blowing up in their face. So you guys are going to get what you want now. I'm going to start reinvestigating Sandy Hook and everything else that happened with it. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. If you're watching this transmission, think for yourself. I know it's a thought crime. And then ask yourself, what is it so strange about Sandy Hook and that tragedy? But I will say this, finally, uh, my heart does go out to all parents that lose children, whether it's to stabbings or whether it's to car wrecks or whether it's to stranglings or whether it's to blunt force trauma or murder, uh, firearms, whatever the case is, I'm a parent and my heart goes out to all parents that have lost children uh, in these tragic events. And so if children were lost in Sandy Hook, my heart goes out to each and every one of those parents and the people that say they're parents that I see on the news. The only problem is I've watched a lot of soap operas and I've seen actors before. And I know when I'm watching a movie, I don't know when I'm watching something real. Let's look at the Sandy Hook.
All right, and that's Alex Jones's response to uh, a call for Trump to distance himself from Alex Jones because we question the events, the official story at Sandy Hook. And, you know, that's the whole thing going back to the JFK assassination. The CIA, or rather the, the uh, FBI, uh, actually it's the CIA that came up with a conspiracy theory because uh, if you didn't believe in the magic bullet theory, if you thought that there was more than just one shooter uh, operating a bolt, uh, uh, <laughs> bolt action rifle, uh, you know, you were a conspiracy theorist. It's a gaslighting tactic. And we have to understand one of the things that we're about here at uh, InfoWars, and we're not going to back away from this, even if it's something that hurts us. You know, Alex took a lot of flack, still does, for pointing out the inconsistencies, the lies of 9-11. We had three steel buildings that fell down, never happened before or since, and only two of them were even hit by a plane. Isn't that interesting? And, of course, you've got the uh, guy who owned the third one saying, pull it down. But And we got witnesses saying, yeah, we heard explosions and so forth. No, don't look anymore at that. Just move away, and if you do, we're going to ridicule you. We're going to call you a conspiracy theorist. Or now the new uh, gaslighting term is going to be fake news, hoax news. No, we're going to look at this, and when we see anomalies, as Alex Jones just pointed it out in that uh, video, we're going to point out those, and we're going to ask questions, and we're going to expect some reasonable explanations. And if we don't get them, then it becomes even more suspicious. You know the guy that was in there, Wolfgang Halbig? He was there because he had been a law enforcement officer. He'd also been a school administrator. And then he combined those two to investigate school shootings like Columbine. That's what he did for a living. Had never seen anything like that before, just like Rob Dew's uncle. Stay with us. We're going to talk about some of these Trump appointments when we come back. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I want to talk about some possible picks that are coming up from Donald Trump's cabinet, as well as appointments, other appointments. Before we do, real quickly, I want to let you know of uh, some of the products that we've put on sale, some of the new introductions that we've had as well. We've got uh, Trump is my president shirt has now been reduced to nine ninety five. That's going very quickly. It's not going to last very long. It's a collector's edition, and we now have it at a blowout price. It's amazing uh, uh, how prescient this was because now we've got the protesters out there saying Trump is not my president. No, actually, he is. <laughs> so this is a great souvenir. It's a way to uh, push back against that as well. Also, new product. Brain Force, a new formulation. Uh, Brain Force Plus has arrived at InfoWarsLife.com. As I've said many times, it's my favorite supplement that we have here. I take most of the supplements because I do my research. I understand the uh, need for certain uh, uh, supplements and things that I don't get in my daily diet. Uh, important things like selenium and other things that you're not going to feel anything when you take selenium. Okay, you're just going to not get sick, uh, as we've seen from many uh, studies. It's going to help you to fight disease. It's going to boost your immune system, that sort of thing. But with brain force, I really do feel it. It does focus my mind when I take it. And we now have a new formulation, Brain Force Plus. It is a new supercharger ingredient, black pepper extract. It's a higher concentration formula for maximum potency. And there are 20% more capsules per bottle. So it's a win-win all the way around, as Alex likes to talk, point out, a 360 win. And finally, we have a new InfoWars Prime app that we're rolling out, and we have a limited-time, half-price introduction. Again, you can go to InfoWars.com forward slash app or to the uh, stores for Apple and Android phones, and you can purchase that app. It's a way that you can get exclusive videos from me, from the rest of the crew, from Alex Jones. You can see behind the scenes. It'll be original content that is unique to that platform. So you'll get behind the scenes, up close comments about what's going on. I've got a report that I'm going to put on there about uh, a secret building. It was an interesting uh, secret building that came out, uh, report that came out on the uh, Drudge Report. It was Intercept. He picked it up, uh, I think it was uh, Wednesday night, uh, talking about how they discovered this kind of dark skyscraper in the center of New York City. Well, you know, we had the same sort of thing very close to where I lived in North Carolina. I'm going to tell you about that on InfoWars Prime app, the connection between these two AT&T facilities. And uh, so I, I've got things like that that I'm going to be talking about. And, of course, our other reporters will have that kind of content. You'll only get that at InfoWars Prime app, and it is half off right now as we roll that out. Now, in the time we've got left, real quickly, we're looking at the way that they're pushing back against these appointments and I, as I've said before, I have the utmost respect for Senator Sessions. He's the only senator who had the integrity to look at this sweeping trade treaty called TPP or TTIP. He took the time to read it. Nobody else did. And not only that, but he was so outraged by what he saw in terms of loss of sovereignty that our economy would be managed by a 
committee that was appointed by these multinational corporations that had secretly written this treaty, uh, they would decide and uh, who was going to be in the treaty. They could add China later on. It wasn't against. It wasn't a balance against China. They would also be able to decide which countries would rise and fall, which industries would rise and fall. It's a total loss of sovereignty. There were so many things in it. He created a massive uh, uh, presentation that he gave to the Senate. Nobody cared in the Senate. So he goes in, he's the only one who reads it, and he says, hey, guys, you got to see this. Nobody would listen to him but Donald Trump. And, you know, Senator Sessions never uh, endorsed anybody before Donald Trump. He endorsed Donald Trump, and he explained to Donald Trump the true issues behind that, the constitutional issues behind it. And so when they come out and say, well, you know, this guy is a racist, attacking him like they do Breitbart. And you've got this woman saying, well, you know, there were some allegations about a couple of things that he said 30 years ago. So he's a racist. And it's like, really? Allegations? She said, there's no statute of limitations on racism. And I heard that and I thought, oh, so there wasn't any statute of limitations on uh, Robert Byrd, were there? Okay. The Ku Klux Klan guy that Hillary and Bill loved, okay? This is a guy who was an exalted cyclops, a founder of the uh, Ku Klux Klan branches, but the Democrats had no problem with that guy. These are some minor allegations compared to that, and they're just allegations, unproven. Thanks for joining us. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for InfoWars Nightly News.